started. I've just popped the recording on. Um, so welcome everyone. It's so fantastic to actually have, well for us anyway, to have people in the room with us because some of you might realise that last year we didn't get an opportunity very much apart from the first two weeks to actually be in classrooms with students. So we're pretty excited to have everybody back on campus. Um, First, I'd just really like to start um, by welcoming you all here. Um, we'll get to know each other a little in a second, know which degrees you're doing, introduce you to some of the staff in the program, uh, and then provide you for some, with some information about what it's like being at uni and what the things you need to know and getting ready are. Um, so, <laughs> so that's not helpful, <laughs> nor is that, oh there we go. Um, so I just want to start by first acknowledging that we are on uh, Ghana land um, and acknowledging that the land of the Ghana people is important to them uh, and their, their responsibility still for caring for the land that we meet on. Um, and we acknowledge the elders past, present and emerging. So I might start, given the fact that I'm standing up here, by introducing myself and then I'll hand over to Sally. Uh, my name is Jamie Gardner. I am the postgrad course coordinator. Um, so you might see me um, if you need help with study plans, any assistance across uh, the semester. And I also teach into a number of topics as well that you'll hear about a little bit later on. So I'll just pass over to Sally, who is our academic lead. Hi everybody, um, welcome. It's so delightful to see people in the room uh, and I know that we've got people watching online so um, welcome to 2021 it's great to have you here um, uh, I know that some people have come straight from school some people have come from the workforce uh, and some people have done both of those things at the same time so uh, whatever level of experience you're bringing um, we're really delighted you'll realize as you come in that you're bringing a a very diverse, um, oh, you're coming into a very diverse program. Uh, our program, one of the great things about it is that we have um, uh, people who bring a whole different um, blend of experiences. We have lots of people with disability, lots of family members, lots of people who have got direct personal experience and connection to people with disability. Lots of passion in our students. Uh, for lots of reasons. Um, but the shared passion that everybody has is wanting to improve the way that people with disability um, are included in the world and contribute to the world. That's also shared by our staff. We have a fantastic uh, crew of staff, uh, all women, uh, all strong women, uh, and uh, people who are contributing from a range of different disciplinary backgrounds. Uh, I'm um, uh, the academic lead here. Um, I'm the Professor of Disability and Community Inclusion. Uh, now I've been here, I'm no longer new, I've been told. <laughs> I've been here for uh, about a year and a half. Um, what um, uh, I, I um, teach across the, the um, postgraduate program and I'm starting to teach in the undergraduate program this year, which is new for me and exciting. So I'm also going to be new in the, the undergraduate program this year with you. It's a really great time for you to be coming into the undergraduate program because we did a big curriculum review last year. Uh, and so you're coming into a new, really exciting program. Um, we've got um, a new degree, the Bachelor of Disability and Community Inclusion that sits inside our Bachelor of Disability and Developmental Education. So the whole of first year has had a great big hoover go through it and you've got a new curriculum that is new, stronger, really current, really sort of front of field. Uh, so it's the perfect time to be coming to start in 2021 in the undergraduate program. For the master's students, the, the graduate certificate students, um, you're coming into a master's program where the, the staff who are teaching you are practitioners as well. They're working out in the field, they've got strong industry connections, so you can feel assured that you're going to be um, taught by staff who are well connected in the field. Um, so um, I really hope that you enjoy your study at a time that's really important in our field. I know a lot of you will be familiar with the NDIS and the way it works. You'll know that we're now almost at 500,000 people in the scheme. But one of the things I'd really like to leave you with is that this 
degree or these degrees are about way, way more than the NDIS. The NDIS is just the mechanism for people to receive their funding to live the kind of lives that they should be living. You'll focus on way more than the NDIS. Um, it, it, all sorts of things are happening in our field at the moment. We've got a new national disability strategy. We're sitting inside a human rights framing for people with disability. It's really hard to take human rights off the shelf and activate them to really understand what they mean. And part of our curriculum renewal was about looking at how we do that. How do we actually activate human rights and make them live and breathe and mean something for people with disability? So you'll hear a lot more about that. Uh, but uh, and that, I really just wanted to give you a sense of where we're going and where you'll be going. Uh, and to welcome you. Um, I hope that you have a great time in your studies. If you don't, please do make sure we know about it. Uh, my, co my office is just down the corridor and the staff who you'll be talking to today um, also have their offices just down the corridor. We really want to know if you're having a good time, a bad time, an indifferent time. Please do stay in touch with us. Let us know how things are going for you. So, welcome. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Fiona Renata, so I am the course coordinator for the Bachelor of Disability Community Inclusion. Hands up, who knows they're enrolled in that degree? Two, maybe? Three? Bachelor of Disability and Developmental Education? Almost everybody in the room. <laughs> Master's Disability Policy and Practice? One. Another one over there. Graduate Certificate in Disability, Graduate Certificate in Positive Behaviour Support, anything I've missed or anyone who's in the wrong room. <laughs> <laughs> All good? Yeah, did everyone put their hand up at some point there? Okay, so you can see we've got our um, students in here from our undergraduate program and our postgraduate programs. Um, and you can see, as Sally said, we have the three years which is embedded in the fourth year, which is the developmental education. Okay, so I'm the course coordinator for the three-year program, um, which is a Bachelor of Disability and Community Inclusion, a brand new program this year. Um, and so basically a little bit from me and, and then we'll move on because today's gonna be a bit of an information overload. Um, we wanna equip you with everything you need to know when you start university. And as Sally said, any questions you've got, any feedback you've got, please feel welcome to contact us and um, let us know. So um, I've been at Flinders now for 10 years this year, <laughs> so a little bit of the opposite end to Sally who's just started at Flinders. Um, I can't believe it's been that long to be honest. Um, but my background is social science. So as Sally said, um, the staff in our team come from various disciplines. So I majored in psychology um, and anthropology. So uh, that's my background. My research area is with people with intellectual disability. And at the moment, I'm exploring inclusion at university for adults with intellectual disability. So we have a program called the Up the Hill Project. You'll get to know a bit more about it. Um, it's one of the only programs in um, Australia. Um, there's two universities who have a similar support and peer mentors support um, people with intellectual disability to come to Flinders. And so that's my area of research at the moment as well. Um, that's probably enough from me, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing more about you guys and your backgrounds and getting to know you all a bit better. So hopefully today won't be too overwhelming. I'm not sure how you're all feeling right at the very moment, but hopefully you'll be feeling um, much more comfortable by the end of today's session and feeling really informed um, and feeling ready to go over the next week. So welcome. Thanks everyone. I'll pass it over to Dr. Michelle, uh, sorry, Associate Professor Michelle Bellum, who's the um, course coordinator for the Bachelor of Disability Developmental Education. Thank you. See, I felt like I was like, <clears throat> like on the prices, right? Does anyone remember that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I said your name wrong, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm Michelle Bellon. Um, hi, everyone. So, I'm the uh, undergrad coordinator for the four year BDDE degree. So uh, I sat where you guys were sitting back in 1996, probably with Jamie as well too. So we, we went through Flinders together. We feel like we were Flinders born and bred. <laughs> We've been around for a while. But uh, no, I did my undergrad degree in disability, then did my honours degree, because I had a strong interest in disability research. Then from then jumped in, did my PhD. That's why I'm called a doctor. Uh, and uh, um, uh, sort of 
balanced um, a little bit of uh, community work with research and uh, found myself um, loving teaching here at Flinders. So um, for the, the, in, the, I guess the undergrad students in the room, if you're doing the three year BDCI degree or the four year BDDE degree, if you find, wow, research sounds like a really interesting pathway, that's an option you can do as an add-on year at the end of either of those two, those two degrees. So keep that sort of tucked in the back of your mind there as well. Um, my, uh, I'm going to be seeing many of you in uh, semester one, so I teach a topic called uh, Introduction to Disability and Neurodiversity, so that's a brand new topic for us, hot off the press, so looking forward to seeing you guys either you know, uh, internally. Do we have, actually, hands up those of you who are in, uh, enrolled internally. Um, yeah, we've got a few people, great. And then hands up those of you who are online. Great, okay, good. So all of our topics in both undergrad and postgrad are offered both internally and online. So we have enormous flexibility and we've got students across Australia. So this is being recorded, <coughs> all, of our, all of our lectures, workshops are recorded, uh, which includes our online students. So welcome to all of those students as well. So there is enormous flexibility. If you find that you've enrolled internally, but life circumstances have changed, and you feel that um, actually um, it's best if I move to online, in the first couple of weeks, you can change your enrolment on the system um, to an online, uh, online availability and you can keep going on that as well. But do keep close contact with your course coordinator, not course coordinator, with your topic coordinator, and let us know how you're going and uh, uh, if you need to do a bit, of a bit of a switch early on in the piece. Otherwise, I'll stop talking now, but I look forward to seeing you all. Yeah, actually, one last thing I wanted to mention. Um, if you need assistance with, um, say, a part-time study plan, um, please do come and either, either um, Fiona or myself, um, and we can help make sure that, um, you know, we appreciate that life shifts and changes and we have to make little adjustments to our progress. So keep in close contact with us and we can make sure that you've got a nice, clear pathway moving forward. Always welcome to Flinders. Thank you. Carmen, do you want to? No, I just said you can teach the study. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, apparently I'm introducing everybody else. Because <laughs> I really wanted to. Come on down. <laughs> okay, no, it's okay. Not funny. Okay. Uh, so we've heard from Sally, uh, we've heard from Michelle who is the BDDE course coordinator, Fiona the BDCI coordinator, me who's the postgrad uh, course coordinator, um, Charmaine who is up the back there, Charmaine is the placement education coordinator, so when you come to do your placement uh, in second year um, you will have lots to do with Charmaine, she coordinates all of the placement activities, teaches the placement topic, um, and she is the go-to for that kind of information. Um, and then the other person that is unfortunately not able to be here today is Alinka Fisher. Uh, Alinka is the uh, student experience coordinator. So at any point in your study, um, we acknowledge that sometimes, as Michelle said, stuff just happens in life and we might need um, a little bit of guidance or support or uh, ways forward, ways to get in contact with um, different services or supports in the university, help with study plans. Basically, a linker is kind of a bit of a go-to for anything you might need if you have questions that don't fit into a topic coordinator or course coordinator kind of box. All of um, the people on that screen there and all of our topic <coughs> coordinators that aren't on the screen are absolutely there to help you. Um, and to support you through your study. And please don't ever hesitate to come and talk to us if there's something that you're not sure about. Um, so then there's Sandy, Sandy Sando, who... <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> um, who uh, is the topic coordinator and teaches into a number of first year uh, and postgrad topics um, across the degrees as well. So you'll come across Sandy in a number of topics as well. Not this semester, second semester um, we have. No, this, this Oh, you did, that's right. It yeah. intro to new disability and neurodiversity tutoring and semester. Oh, and I said, okay. So, so Sandy, you'll come across Sandy this semester. <laughs> Sandy. All right, so um, is there anything you guys wanted to add or no? We're okay? Okay. Um, you guys, you're welcome to hang around if you want to and hear us talk or.
with you. I'll just carry on, and if you want to sneak out the back, you can. Does that sound all right? <laughs> um, I would love to say, but I have another meeting that I have to yeah. do. Um, enjoy the morning, everybody. <laughs> so just um, a couple of small little things probably that um, you should be aware of. If anybody needs the bathroom, they are literally straight out the door down the corridor on the left. Sorry, not good with left and right. On the left, where the little blue people are hanging off the wall. Not literally. Um, and um, if you need a bottle of water, anything like that, please feel free to get up and grab one. I guess Fiona and I are quite um, uh, relaxed. Would that be right, Fiona? Yeah, quite chilled absolutely. if you need to get up. If you want to ask a question, the idea about today is for you to feel comfortable about being here. Ask any questions that you have so that you're feeling really comfortable about being at uni and not feeling that I just remember sitting there feeling like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I was someone who um, came from the country, I grew up in the country, came from school, came to Adelaide, so moved to Adelaide, came to uni, was first in family to go to uni, so I was sitting in that seat just going, oh my god, what is this world? So um, I appreciate that some of you might not feel that overwhelmed, um, but we don't want you to feel that overwhelmed either. So if you've got any questions, if you're feeling unsure about anything, that's what we're here for. Please interrupt if you're thinking if you think of anything at any point in time. Yeah. Um, just way, just going to mention the contact tracing thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Donna as well. Oh, yeah. 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 At the beginning when people come in. But I will do it again. <laughs> um, so I, I think every, I think I've caught everybody as you come in, but if not, um, on the table over there, there's a few bits and pieces. Um, there's some giveaway bags and bits and pieces there. There's also chocolate, which is important. Um, <laughs> there also, next to the hand sanitizer, is a sign-in sheet. So if you were registered, if you could just tick your name off the list. If you um, didn't register, there is another form that you can just fill in to say that you're here. So if you can make sure you could do that, that would be super. Oh, we are in that world now. Well, you've chosen the right degree in that case. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do today, so we've had our bit of a welcome. Oh, look at how well we're running on time. It's 9.22. Um, so what we're going to go through now is just getting yourself ready, um, what being at university is about, and then just information that you might need to access. At about 10.15ish, um, we will have the... Flinders University Rural Health Society come and talk to you about what they do. Then we have got um, some of our former graduates um, that are now practicing as developmental educators coming to talk to you about the Developmental Educators Association. Um, we've then got some students, current students that are coming in to meet with you because sometimes I know it can be a bit overwhelming maybe to ask us questions, but you can probably talk to the, uh, the other students that come in, ask them any questions, talk to them about their experiences of being at university. Um, and it's often really a nice way to chat about what it's really like. Then we'll have a bit of a coffee break. And please don't let me forget to hand these out because we have free coffee vouchers for you. Um, and then you can go with the uh, students that come in for a bit of a tour around the campus so that you know roughly where some of your rooms are where to buy coffee, uh, all of those kind of really important things, library, those kind of things. Um, after that, we'll come back. Uh, the undergrad students will meet in here. So those of you doing the Bachelor of Disability Community Inclusion and the Bachelor of Disability Developmental Education will come back to this room. If you're a postgrad student doing the graduate certificates or the master's program, we'll be in that room right next door. And we can go through study plans, we can ask any questions about enrolment, or any questions at all, that's what that time will be for. Sound okay? Everybody feeling all right at this moment? Yes. Good. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna start with where to find us. And I love that we're in this room because it's actually really easy to do that. So um, all of the staff that you will come across um, in your topics will be just down this corridor. And to find us, we're actually kind of tucked in behind in a little corridor. But to find us, there's a glass door just out here that looks like that, if you can see it on the screen, or just out here. Um, and that's the office that you come into to find us. We have a lovely reception area where nobody sits. Don't think that that's unusual because no one ever sits there. But there is a phone there with a list of our phone numbers. And if you need to see us, then you just use the phone and call through to see us. 
All right. Oh, what I probably should have also mentioned, totally feel free to screenshot, but um, that, no, it's fine, go for it. I'm, I'm happy to pose if you like. <laughs> Um, but we also have the slides um, available on um, the uh, flow site as well, which I can show you in a second. Um, if you need anything from the <laughs> College of Nursing and Health Sciences, um, we'll get the students when you go on your tour to show you where that is. Basically, Sturt is set out in a bit of a square. So the buildings are north, east, south and west. And in the middle, there's a nice grass area. So if you're standing in the middle of this lovely grass area, you will see a big colourful um, mural, which is actually a lift. And just in there is where the Nursing and Health Sciences Office is. All right, so if you need anything from them. The other thing um, is that I would recommend, particularly if you need to go off to the main campus at all, which is huge out there in comparison to our little bit down here, um, is that you get the Lost on Campus app on your phone. Um, so feel free to grab your phones out and have a look at what that looks like. But that's a really helpful app to have because you can just put in the room number that you're looking for and it'll give you directions of how to get there. While I'm talking about main campus, I went up there yesterday to go to the library. Um, not a lot of uh, extra bits and pieces happen down at Sturt, but up on the main campus, there's all sorts of things going on because of orientation week. Um, I would highly recommend that you go up there, have a look around, familiarise yourself with where the central library is, uh, where the hub is, they've got great food up there, um, and just kind of have a bit of a look around and engage with some of the stuff that's going on. Everybody okay about how to roughly find things? So now, now that you've found us, we'll show you how to get out. Um, so this is just a safety video so that um, you know how to find your way out and know what to do if sirens start going off. Today I'm here to talk to you about the emergency evacuation procedures at Flinders Sturt. This short video will guide you through what to do in the event of an emergency to ensure an orderly and safe evacuation. All right, the uh, principles of... Uh... When you hear the alert tone, <laughs> please cease interfall movement and await further instructions via the public announcement system or from the warden. When you hear the evacuation tone, please immediately cease what you are doing, pack up your personal belongings, and listen to your lecturer or the warden for instructions on evacuating the building. Look for the green running man and exit signs, and ensure you take the most direct route to exit the building while avoiding areas that may be affected by fire. It is important not to run when leaving the building. This cannot be used in the case of a fire. Please use the stairs. Disabled, aged and injured persons who are unable to descend stairs should take refuge in the stairwell, ensuring not to block the way out. Staff will advise the fire service accordingly. Once you have exited the building, please move to the assembly point at the southeast corner of the oval. Please do not return to the building until you have been told it is safe to do so. If you have any questions about this presentation, please ask your lecturer or warden. I'm kind of guessing that one of the questions might be where uh, is the oval? <laughs> so where we are today, if you exit the building, the oval is basically just over here. So as you walk out, hopefully you'll see the big oval past the trees. <clears throat> okay, so what we want to do is start off by you guys getting to know each other a little better because we're super excited that you're actually in the room together because that makes us, you know, <laughs> feel a warm and fuzzy. Um, and so what we want to do is make sure you've kind of got someone on the first day that you come to uni that you at least have a familiar face. So please chat with the people on your table or next to you, get to know each other a little better. Um, what degrees you're enrolled in, is it your first time at uni or, you know, are you someone who's come back to uni? What's the scariest thing you've ever done for fun if you're looking for something to talk about? Um, 
And what do you hope to get out of today? Is there something that you have a question about that um, you really, really want answered or that you're really worried about? You should just kind of chat with the people around you. If you're sitting with people that you already know, that's fine, but maybe kind of bring some other people into your fold too so that you um, get to know some other people. Chat amongst yourselves. So, um, this is really just for us because we haven't used this room before. How cool is that? <laughs> but these things that we've just given you, we think, because we haven't done the room training, so don't tell anyone. Um, we think that what they're for is that you put them on your table and then when you talk, like it's like a microphone, like I'm, what I'm wearing. So it actually doesn't make you a whole lot louder, but what it does is make sure that what you say is picked up for the recording for the external students. So we're hoping that that's what will happen. All right. So should we just do a really quick lap of the room? Do you want to just check down a bit? Maybe yeah. 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 Want to be in here. yeah. All good. Um, a quick lap of the room. If you want to just do, you know, like one short thing um, about yourself, that would be great. So you don't need to introduce yourselves lately like we did. Just one quick fact about yourself and your name, that would be great. Would you like to start, Manny? So if you just push the button on the table, I'm hoping that that'll go green and it will work. <laughs> uh, well, hi everyone. My name is Manny. I'm a teacher. I teach ESO. Maybe you could also tell us what degree you're doing. That would be super as well. Uh, I'm doing a uh, Master's Degree in Policy and Practice. Master's, great. Thank you. Uh, Bachelor of uh, Disability and Developmental. Great, thank you. Uh, my name is David. Um, I'm doing the VDD3. Um, I'm a Gemini. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like long walks. Um, uh, and um, yeah, <laughs> looking forward to uh, starting the year and uh, getting underway. Thank you. You can probably turn yours to red now if the next table would like to turn theirs to green. I hope this is working, otherwise it's just a little fun piece of paper. <laughs> uh, I'm Kylie. I'm doing um, Bachelor of Developmental uh, Disability and Developmental Education and I am currently working in the DIS provider. So I'm more to learn more about the sector. Great. Um, I'm Tatiana. I'm doing Disability and Development Education. You didn't tell them that we're super entertaining? No. No. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, what about the table at the back? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Ray. Um, I'm doing the Bachelor of Disability and Community Inclusion. Um, I'm a full time mum, final girl, um, who has a disability. So I'm hoping the experience I've been going through, I'm hoping with this Bachelor to build more inclusive um, activities for the little kids in the community. Great, thank you. Uh, my name's Max. Uh, I'm not actually doing the course, just doing prompt for it. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> no problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> I brought my mum with me on my first day, so, you know. <laughs> I'm Emma, I'm doing a Bachelor of Disability and Development Education. And here's your moral support. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.
Sorry, this I'm not teaching it here this, this year, but yeah. Um, I'm Gabby. Um, I'm also doing the Bachelor of Community Service Education. Uh, I'm in just doing sport work, work at the moment, um, and I just love it, so it's what I want to do. Cool. Hi, I'm Conrad. I, I'm doing Community Inclusion, and uh, this is the uh, Swimming Pool Club, and working in the Fresh Project. Direction. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Catherine Claire Wood. I'm doing the disability and community inclusion. I've been doing both, uh, I've been in the disability industry for five years, so I'm doing my bachelor of both there. Um, I wanted to upgrade my skills and knowledge. Great. Welcome. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that's all right. I bought my mum. It's totally cool. It's the cool thing to do. Thank you. Okay, so now what we want to do is just to make sure that we cover everything. I'm sure that you have lots of questions about what it's like to be at university, have lots of questions that you might want answered today. So Fiona's going to scribe because the minute I have a whiteboard in my hand, I can't spell. I can't either, so don't worry. <laughs> um, so has anybody got anything that they want answered today? Like anything? Where to park? What were you hoping to get? What out do you of today? like? What do you want to know from today? The parking. 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 Yeah. Gosh. Okay. <laughs> we spent half an hour talking about parking around here. Last yeah. year it was easy to find a park. It was. Yes. <laughs> was there something over here too? Um. Which referencing? Referencing system. Yeah. 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 Um, so assignment drafting, like whether we actually get a draft back. Uh huh. So how to get feedback on help on yeah. your assignments? Yep. Keep going, guys. Keep I can going. write faster if you want me to. Oh, how to join online classes? How to join online classes? Yeah, great. You can't really see down here, can you? And I'm really short, so I have to go down the bottom. <laughs> Is there something back? Um, just about the lectures we have to watch in real time as a lecture. Okay, so lecture whether you can stream or you can watch them as a recording. Yeah, how they all record. How how it all works really? Yeah. How Fiona, this room has been designed for maximum accessibility. Isn't it just? However, you, the, the table over there is actually a, an adjustable whiteboard. So it flips oh. and, it goes up and it goes down. So this is. How did you know that? She's done the training. I've done the training. <laughs> oh, yes. You've <laughs> done room training. Because I was thinking this looks like the most inaccessible element of this room. But and I don't think, think you can read it. In front of yeah, it's kind of a bit awkward, isn't it? Because the desk is there. I have to admit, though, I do enjoy. Stretching, so <laughs> lucky that. <laughs> Come on, guys, I need to put one up here. <laughs> what else have we got? Another one, sorry. Yeah, um, don't be sorry. I'm an online student, yep. and so how can I get involved and make sure I'm not missing out on anything? Oh, great. Good one to give me a long one, too. <laughs> <laughs> Stretch, Fiona. Anything else? Where to get them, what they are, all that kind of stuff? Sure. Okay. Yeah, what happens if you're sick? Yeah. 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 
please don't come in if you've yeah. got COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't just come oh, in and sit at the back. Yeah, no. Yeah. 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 Events. Programs. To the program, to the program, or or more broadly as well, in terms of um, other things that go in the uni. Yeah, but maybe uh, maybe more for the program, program. than the events. Or yep. Yeah. Yep. Or peer stuff. Peer, yeah, peer networking and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Other things. We get free stuff every time we come. So. <laughs> oh yes. <No. laughs> we can free. do like. Oh, sorry, I'm a mum, and all I can think of is the fact that Question when my mark. kids were at school, I had to send them with a box of tissues every year. Like, and I was thinking, oh, we could do that. Like, we could do, you need to bring chocolate, and we'll allocate a week. <laughs> Free stuff. Question Free stuff. <laughs> sorry? Tech. Oh, tech requirements, sure. <clears throat> Anything that's worrying you that we might be able to... Communication, best communication. Best communication. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, changing from an online course to coming in physically for a second year. Like sure, yeah. so if you're enrolled yeah. externally now, yeah. coming in as a... Yeah. And that actually probably includes any enrolment changes yeah. um, such as from part-time to full-time or full-time to part-time, etc. as well. So, yeah. good one. Can we maybe add up there the critical dates as well? Maybe we should yep. talk about those because that kind of relates to the enrolment changes and stuff. Yeah. Placements. Placements. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, turn it in. The, um, the oh, turn it in. Yep. Has everyone got an ID card? No. Yep. No. Can we put that up here? Good. Yep. I actually am going, oh my god, Fiona, I hope you've got the answers for some reason. But that's, that's a slide on that. Yeah. That's like putting up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, that's a great idea. So, areas yeah, access for study. areas for study and also how to access the internet when you're on campus. Is that on the slide as well, Jamie? Oh, I don't know if I would. Did you run? Put it. Uh, no one can see this, but we can see it. <laughs> you can cross it off. Anything else that anybody's worried about that they might have answered or we might make you feel better about? Or Maybe the accessibility, like when you read the things happen in your life and you just can't read Yeah. Yeah, flexibility. So you're talking about in class, online, assignments. Extensions, etc. Yeah. All that stuff. Yep. Yeah. If um, one thing that comes to mind, um, there's a session on a certain day and um, the focus on that is on Cambridge and that'd be um, amazing day. Okay. So flexibility around the quiz times as well. Yep. Anything else? Good question. <laughs> Do you know the answer to that, Fiona? No. <laughs> yes. Actually, I watched one of those um, ready to go videos and they basically said the difference. Yes. And that's the quarters somewhere. <laughs> on the Flinders website, it's the quarters somewhere. Yeah. Excellent. I think I've got a link to some of that stuff in here. All right. Some people might even want to know what's the difference between a tutorial and a lecture because yep. I know some people have never been to uni and they go, what on earth is a lecture? Yep. What on earth is a tutorial? I don't understand. I have to go to both. What does that mean? So I'll even just put that there because I know that's come up in previous years. Like, What's yep. the difference between a tutorial and a lecture? It's okay to ask questions like that. Yeah. Um, a seminar. Seminar. You've got that on your timetable as well. So many different names. Have we got anything, anything else? else? I didn't think we had any in our program, but you maybe. That's okay. Okay, that, that's fine. We can cover your orientation day too. Yeah, that's no. fine. <laughs> Anything else that people are worried about or need a hand with? Yeah. Sort of like roughly, like the time management between like assignments and stuff, like sort of tips on how to manage your time. Yeah. Like life and uni. Yeah. Anyone got?
do I need those tips? <laughs> yeah. All right. Fantastic we, work, guys. I'm impressed with this. Hopefully, we can get through all of this. I'm wondering whether um, we the best way to to go through this is maybe go through the stuff that's in the presentation, and you can cross yeah, stuff off as we go. Oh, yeah, that's all in here too. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I was just whispering to Jamie, but you guys need to know this information. Um, the Flinders website is actually a wealth of information, and I actually think it addresses every single one of these things. I was assuming that that microphone is capturing my voice because it's so loud, but let's not assume. Um, yeah, all of these things you can find on the Flinders website. So we'll try to give you as many answers as possible, but if there's something we haven't covered or something we're not sure about, um, or we might even have given inaccurate information that's not the latest 2021 version. Um, it's all on the Flinders website and there is a lovely section for students. So just when you go on there up the top right corner, click on students and everything you need to know, I, I dare say all of that stuff is actually there. So you're going to do a bit of a quick demo here. I'm going to do a quick. There you go. So this is your students page here where it's got everything you need. Um, so your quick links are there too, which is the ones that are most frequently um, asked areas fees. Nobody asks about fees. Nobody asks about scholarships. Um, but that will change as well as because you can see orientation is the most important one at the top at the moment. I'll just move the mouse on there. Oh, what did I just do? Did I just close it? <laughs> How did that happen? Yeah, so orientation is at the top there, but that will change, obviously. In the next few weeks, that's going to be removed because that's just relevant for this week, okay? And you'll see up here as well, there's a link for new students. Yep. And then your course, and then his support services, and et cetera, et cetera. Look at them all. Look at them all. You're in safe hands, guys. All right, I'm going to go through this one. All right, let's have a them off through the sides. All right, where did this one come from? So, student ID cards. Back here. Ah, yes. Okay. Oh, I feel like I should have done a bit of um, study before I actually came to give this because we used to actually have to go to the library to get student ID cards, but it looks as though you can go to Opta. Does everyone know what Opta is? Mm -hmm. It's okay if you don't. You know what Opta is? You know what that page is with the, that you log into and you've got the little tiles on there? Yeah? Um, so if you go into there, you can um, select to order your ID card. Right. Do you want to do a quick demo of that as well? So is it, who's, hands up who's been on Okta so far with your fan and your password. Awesome. Almost everyone. If you haven't, you'll work it out very quickly. It's very easy. And the yep. question was where do you pick up the, the card? Is that, that yep. yeah. Does anyone know the answer to that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah great. Could you just press the microphone if that's okay? Thank, Thank you, Green. Yep. Either from the mailing address, self mailing address, oh, can post it. Oh. Or, or at the student service. Uh, oh, great. Uh, the center. Yep. At cool. the, uh, at the main, main, main campus. Cool. Okay, great. So, did everyone hear that? So, that was at the either at the main campus in the hub in the student services section, or um, it can be mailed to you, which is awesome. Okay, enrolling in your topics. Everybody had a chance to kind of have a look at that? Yeah. And Fiona and I can probably go through that in a little bit more detail in the session when you come back after you've had a bit of a look around campus, because that's when you'll be either in the postgrad or the, hopefully I've got people in the room. Oh yes, I have, I've got a few postgrad students. Um, we can have a look at your enrolment and help you with that as well, look at study plans and so forth. Yeah. So Fiona or Michelle can give you a hand with your study plans if you need it, yeah. Can I just mention, again I'm hoping that the microphone is projecting my voice but just in case it's not, it's actually called Flinders or Bedford Park, it's the most confusing thing ever. Mm. Jamie, yeah. which one's which? <laughs> so Flinders ben, is ben, online, isn't Flinders, it? Yes. <laughs> So when you look on the system, it's, okay. it's meant to say Flinders Online, but sometimes it cuts the online bit off. But when you enrol, Flinders is actually the, in, the external version of the topic. 
and Bedford Park is being here on campus. So how totally confusing is that? Yeah, so when you look at your enrolments, it might say just Flinders, and that actually means that you've registered for the online version. Yeah. Okay, when you look at your enrolments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It used to be called external. Why they changed it, I couldn't tell you. There yeah. you go. Well, just call it online. <laughs> um, textbooks and resources. There's a link there to look for. Um, a lot. Of, we have some topics that use textbooks and some topics that use e-readings. So, I wonder if I can just quickly log on to the flow site to yeah, show you what that yeah. looks like. And a combination of both. Uh, yeah, and a combination of both. Yeah. Do you want to answer another question while I log on and muck around here? Someone's got a question. Could someone have their hand up? I was just going to say you can also talk, Jamie, while you're showing the flow site regarding um, where you find a lecture recording, um, can, do you have to attend, yep. um, watching. And actually, as course coordinators, we don't know all of those answers because every topic might be different. Every topic has different requirements, every topic has different structure, different workshops versus seminar versus tutorial versus lectures. Some have got online video recordings that you need to watch, some have got an internal lecture that you can watch the recording of. Every topic is different and the best way to find the answers to those questions is the flow site and the topic coordinator. Okay, so it's the topic coordinator who you'll go to find out the name of the topic coordinator when you first log on to the flow site, which is what Jamie's going to show you, um, and talk to the topic coordinator and find those answers on the flow site. So I'll just get Jamie to show you some of those and then I can cross those off. Okay, so we started talking about readings, so I'll just quickly show you about the readings and textbooks. So in the topic information section generally, you'll find a little thing that looks like a book. If you click on that, it'll take you to the reading list for the topic. I promise it will eventually. And then each week you'll see if there's any recommended text for the topic and then any um, other e-readings that might be in there. And you can get them directly from here. So you can click on the link and it will come up with the topic reading for you. Is the recommended reading at the top where it says book, is that an actual textbook? No, it will say textbook if it's a textbook. Okay. Yep. And um, a lot of the books, if it says view online, a lot of the books are actually ebooks anyway, so you can access them um, online. The other little hot tip that I found out from the librarian when I met with her yesterday is that um, you can only use a certain percentage of an ebook online every day because of copyright issues. However, it'll come up with a warning saying you've used your allocated amount, but if you wait 24 hours, that resets, so you can go back into the book and download another chapter. So there's a hot tip for you for, from the librarians. So if I just go back to the flow site, each site will probably have this little welcome video here which basically talks you through what the topic is going to be about and any kind of things that you might need to know. And then there'll be another little video um, which is about navigating the flow site, so how to find all the bits and pieces that you need to find on the flow site. And a lot of that will, a lot of those videos will answer a lot of the questions that are on here about the topic. So this is perspectives. So all of you in first year probably are enrolled in perspectives. Would I be correct in assuming that? Yeah. So it just indicates here that there is a lecture which is online. Now for um, the perspectives topic and the introduction to disability and neurodiversity. Sorry, I keep struggling over that name because it's a new one. Um, you will find the lecture recordings in the activity book each week. So each, each week you'll have an activity book. It'll contain a link to the readings. It'll contain a link to the lecture recordings. It'll have what you need to do to prepare for your tutorials and that kind of stuff. So your lecture recordings for those topics you um, can watch at your own leisure. They have been left in your timetable, so you'll probably see something in your timetable that says lecture. That's We've left that in there for first year students so they know they need to watch their lecture. But if you can't watch it at that particular moment in time on a Monday at I don't know, 10 to 11 or whatever it is, um, you can watch it at another time and all of the stuff is in the activity book there. Does that make sense? Sure. There's a lot of clicking um, and it's not a lot of clicking in flow sites. 
Um, but you do have to click it <laughs> uh, because there are exactly, you can see on the right hand side, individual chat forms that contain further detail, further activities, further. Yes, there are. There is lots of clicks on flow, as Michelle said. Um, we've tried to keep the structure of the flow sites and where you find information as consistent as possible across the topics so that it makes it a little easier for you. Um, so then, if you're an internal student, you will come in physically to the university for tutorials. Um, if you're an external student, we will have them online. So, where do you find your so that's under each week. I'll just go back here. So this is the main flow site there. I'm just gonna close this so I'm not scrolling everywhere and see where it's got week one. And then it'll have activity. We call flow a death by scroll, yes. <laughs> so you just keep going down. <laughs> and each week, and um, what will happen for this topic, and I think Michelle, I'm not sure what you're going to do for your topic, but what will happen is each week will pop up when you need it. So rather than for this particular topic you seeing weeks 1 to 12 and going, oh my god, where's all the information, it'll just come up week by week when you need it. Alright, yeah. go on there at any time to the activity book and watch the lecture recordings and information that's in there. Yep. Yes, so some topics might have a collaborate session, although I don't know that that is any of our first year topics. Uh, not for our two DSRS topics, however, you, you, your many students will also be enrolled in the health uh, research and study skills one. I don't know what they're doing, so I refer to this. As well, if you're doing an option topic from somewhere around the university, I'm not sure what they're doing across yeah. those two. So, yeah. yeah, always check, always check that. And the instructions should be on the flow site, and that most topics should, particularly first year topics, should have a welcome video and a navigating the flow site, which gives you that information. I think my one tip is um, if you're enrolled in a topic, for example, perspectives and intro to disability, uh, and you're watching the, the, the online resources, the, the little video recordings, the activities that you have to do, make sure that you've done them before your scheduled um, internal tutorial. So if you're an internal tutorial and you're coming to a tutor that's scheduled here on campus on a Wednesday or a Thursday, Give yourself time to have gone through that week's materials. You've done the reading, you've done the, the, the watched all the lecture uh, little recordings, you've had a crack, and then you come to Tukes ready to go. So um, that's how you're going to get the best, uh, the, the best, the best out, out of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just going to comment on collaborate. Sorry. Well, oh, somebody yes. asked, how do I get involved as an external online student? Yeah. Um, how do you make sure that you feel that you're connected and you're engaging with your peers and you're your topic coordinator and that's called collaborate that's where most of us will join you live um, and we got so good at that during COVID I must say I'm really proud of our team for learning all the online technologies because we actually had to deliver a class online instead of here in mm. person and we made sure the students could still come in it's just like being in a room together and you can have your cameras on and we can all chat and we can um, type and talk and do activities together so yep. Um, collaborate is available through Flow. So that's the way you keep engaged as an online student as yep. well. There'll be set session times when you can join your group or your tutor or your, or your lecturer. Um, and then also there are discussion forums that you participate in by typing your responses. Um, yep. You can even get creative and record yourself and put a video up if you want to. So I'll just show you how to find that. So it'll be in the communication hub and it's that little purple icon there called collaborate. Now that is always there. So there's an open course room, uh, course room at the top here that is always available. If you want to schedule a time to meet with another student to chat or whatever, it will always be in. It will always be there for you to have um, an opportunity to go in. And then you'll see for each topic there'll probably be some scheduled tutorial times as well. So I'll just show you what it looks like. You just join the course room. I'm not going to have a video because there's no Still video in here. <laughs> And there's no one in there, but oh, it's probably not going to work, is it? But when you're at home, you have a camera, video. It's great if you can turn your camera on because then we know who's talking um, and, and that kind of thing. Uh, it's, it's kind of really helpful. 
we've got, I think, quite good at using it, as Fiona said, because we had to use it all last year. So that does link into um, the tech requirements there. So making sure you've got internet and fairly reliable internet. And yep. if you don't, you're welcome to come on campus. Um, all of the communal areas, you can access free Wi-Fi, the library. There are computers, there are hot desks. There's all sorts of tech facilities at the university if you're not able to get access at home. Um, but definitely the internet is a requirement for your studies. Um, as is potentially a camera and a microphone if you can. I know I had some students who said my mic's not working, so they ended up typing their responses. But if you can, a microphone and a video is, is very useful. I don't know if there's anything else there. But... Uh, no, only the other thing that I was going to add is someone asked about internet access. Yeah. If you want to grab your phones or whatever out now um, and have a look and just, if you, it should automatically pop up with something called EDU Roam. to log into that and then once you've set it up I think you have to uh, there's a thing you have to accept I think isn't there oh, yeah. mine just happens automatically yeah I don't mind this <laughs> now um, once you've set it up it will just as soon as you come on campus it will connect to that it's just your fan and your password and everything yeah but it's really handy because then it just joins you when you come on campus automatically and it just as a as an aside there edu roam is supposed to be a uni every university facility mm. i've been at other universities and i've tried to log in with fan and password it doesn't always work but edu roam will come up as a wi-fi network when you're at adelaide uni or uni or say or yeah. interstate uh, uh, visiting a uni um so edu roam is actually a I think it's a national um, a Wi-Fi network that you should be able to access at universities, um, but doesn't always work with your fan and password, but pretty cool that we can have that access. So just bear that in mind, that's one you've got to look for in the list of Wi-Fi options, okay? Yep. All right, so tick, 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 we've got lots tick, of ticks tick, happening. We've done the textbooks. Did you talk about um, like compulsory? Oh no, I didn't talk of, about compulsory you know, just attendance. Just sick, that kind of thing, yeah. Yes, no I didn't. So obviously, if you're sick for your lectures, um, that's probably not going to be too much of an issue for you because you can watch them at home while you're in bed or when you're starting to feel better, those kind of things. So you can work around that. Um, if you have a scheduled tutorial, um, the tutorials for the perspectives topic and for the intro to disability and neurodiversity, um, those two, um, the tutorials are there for your learning. So. They are there for your learning, they are not compulsory. If you are unwell, you miss a tutorial. Um, we will be recording one tutorial a week, so if anybody has any um, you know, access requirements, those kind of things, we'll put the recording up. I guess the, the opportunity that you miss by not coming to a tutorial is that you're missing the opportunity to interact with other students, ask questions, clarify knowledge, those kind of things. So it'll be like today, being in the room, you get to ask questions, we can see if someone looks confused, all of those kind of things. Whereas if you're watching online, it's a different experience. Um, however, they're not compulsory. So if you can't come to a tutorial because you're unwell, then that's okay. All right? Can I jump on the Please. Yeah, uh, so, so with the yeah, Injury and Disability Neurodiversity, uh, the tutorials are a value add. Yeah. Um, if you do the topic online completely, everything's there to support your, your learning. But if you're able to come internally to class, then we're there to, yet again, provide that face-to-face -face contact for students who learn best that way. Some students really say, listen, I, I have to hear it, I have to talk about it, I have to have a coffee you know, with people afterwards, that's how I learn. So for as long as we're able to, as long as the government enables us to have internal tutes, we, we, we'll run them. But if worst case scenario comes and we, we can't do that anymore, everything is ready and, and, and there for you online. But yep. they're not compulsory, they're value add. If that's how you learn best, come and join us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And most students who've chosen to be an internal student have chosen that because they want to come and interact with others and that's how they best learn. So that's what they're there for. As well as the fact that we provide the online collaborate sessions for the external students as well. So they have that same opportunity, but just in a different format. We've got about two minutes yeah. until our next session because I've noticed our yes. guest speakers in. Um, we're not going to like be able to talk for hours about every single one of these. I just wanted to say, 
top tip, but it doesn't always work, is just if you go to the Flinders homepage, oh, it's not even there, that's Helen Andy. <laughs> um, something like um, parking, something like textbooks, etc., is your search tool. As I said, it doesn't always bring the result you want, but I know that textbooks does, because I tried that one. Um, and if you just type textbooks, there's actually a link that will tell you what all your textbooks are, okay? So don't forget about that function on the Flinders homepage. You go to the search, just like the Google of Flinders, and type parking, for example. Let's hope this one works. <laughs> and you get a map, that's nice. But the next one is parking on campus, okay? So as I said, everything you need is on that Flinders website somewhere. It's just about finding it. So just keep researching what's the best way to find what I need to know. Um, critical dates I think might be called key dates and if you just search for that it'll tell you, there you go, perfect, top one, calendar and key dates, okay? So don't underestimate that, we won't be able to share everything with you, so if you just go to that search function, type what it is you're wanting to find out and hopefully you'll get a link to that information, yeah. okay? Hot tip on, on parking here on campus at Sturt, uh, as you know, there's a lot of different disciplines um, who, who, who come and study here at Sturt, and one of the biggest is nursing. So sometimes on particular days, car parks are shock a block full because of all the thousands of nursing students that we have. Um, so, uh, yeah, always give yourself plenty of time um, uh, where you can organise to get here maybe about half an hour earlier, settle in, make sure you, you, you sometimes, and this was perhaps pre-COVID, I, I wonder how things are changing now, um, you could not get a car park at any of our car parks around here. You had to park on the on the we call on the oval down um, uh, down near the med centre and then walk up, or you know there were or, or, or find a car park in the suburbs somewhere. Sometimes it was really problematic. So um, we haven't found that uh, over the last year, which has been a, a positive spin from COVID perhaps. Um, but give yourself half an hour, give plenty of time. Don't be rushed. Grab a coffee before you come yeah. in. The other thing people might want to know about parking is actually how to get your parking permit. Um, if you go to the Opta page, there's a, a little thing called, I think it's called Beat, Beat Permit, permit. Um, which is a little an, a little tile with a red car on it. Um, if you click on there, you'll be able to get your parking permit um, and it's very, it's very expensive. The other thing, if you're just not going to do casual parking, there's an app for your phone called... Cello Park, Park. thank that. you. <laughs> Cello Park, and then you can just um, put in your details on there and you can casually park using that as well. So they're your two options just in case you need to have um, need that detail. And before we do move on, the other one I thought was really critical was the best way to communicate and linking in with assignment drafting feedback. As I said before, a lot of the stuff is topic specific. So you need to ask your topic coordinator or your lecturer or your tutor and look at the flow site. So even in terms of drafting, we usually don't get you to submit an entire draft, but some topics will have that opportunity for feedback along the way. But this one here, best ways to communicate, communication um, avenues. Can you give me some ideas? What do you think when you're at uni? Is it to come banging on Jamie's door? Or is it to barge your way down that corridor and go, I've got a problem, Fiona? <laughs> what do you think? Email. Any ideas? Email? Yeah? Discussion boards on Flow? Yeah. Very good, excellent. Both of those are perfect ways of communicating if it's not urgent. If it's urgent, pick up the phone or come and see us or go to the Nursing and Health Science office, which you'll see when you do your tour. Um, there's always staff around who can help for urgent matters like first aid, etc., or in an incident or whatever's happened. But if it's not urgent, emails and communication boards on Flow are really critical. The communication boards on Flow, most topic coordinators will say, is your first point of communication for a question related to the topic. So if you've got a question about the assignment, the reading, um, flow, the lecture, anything along those lines, you put on flow. And the reason for that is because everybody else in the class wants to know the answer to that as well. Um, so you're helping each other and we don't have to answer 600 emails with the same question. <laughs> so put it on flow in the first instance. But if it is personal, you can email us. So things like a disability access plan, which taps into the, somebody asked about flexibility, um, around extensions, if you have a disability or um, some sort of 
special compassionate rounds for those sorts of things, um, you can communicate to your topic coordinator, lecturer, tutor via email. Okay? So topic specific discussion forums on Flow, anything personal via email to the topic coordinator or lecturer. Generally, the topics that we have within our, de our degrees will be APA. DSRS topics, yeah. but like DSRS. Michelle said, yes. we've, got a range we've got a range of options in your first year um, that are in different disciplines, and they might use Harvard or Author Date or Chicago, or there's a whole range of them. Um, but usually, DSRS topics are APA. And if you don't know how or what we're talking about, um, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. We will give you some information about that. And the Student Learning Centre and the what's the drop-in place called Learning Lounge up at the Hub are really useful resources if you need some help with referencing and those kind of things. All right. Do you want to come up and talk about? <laughs> so we have someone here to talk to you about. That's Kirsty, isn't it? It is Kirsty. It's Kirsty. Well yeah. um, from the uh, Flinders University Rural Health Society. I didn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, I am the um, co-president from Allied Health. Um, Are you going to stay? Not for very long. <laughs> okay, hopefully. Um, for the Flinders University Rural Health Society, uh, we are a multidisciplinary society on campus. We're federally funded, which means we get to do really cool things for very little cost to individuals. Uh, we've got some fantastic stuff coming out this year, including a camp. Um, most of it's talked about in the video, so I'll put it on. Uh, and then if you have any questions, just ask. So FERS is Flinders University Rural Health Society, and FERS is all about giving students the opportunity to have an interest in rural or country practice to get exposed to it. So we run events through all that the year, which is all about giving you guys a little taste of the country. So some of the events that we run throughout the year are like our rural high schools. That's where we go out to rural high schools and talk to students there and tell them about the degrees that we're studying. Great thing about it as well is you also get to see lots of attractions the state has to offer, like the Big Orange out in the Riverland and the Painted Silos at Melbourne. Other events we run as well are experiences with Royal Flying Doctors, where some people even get to go on the ride along program with that. We always have our classroom night and wilderness health night where we have the snake catchers come out and talk and tell and show us all their snakes that they catch over the years. We've got a quiz night coming up this year as well as the new Riverland camp. It's a great thing. Hi everyone, my name is Alison and I'm a speech pathologist working in country health in the Riverland. I've been here for 12 months now after graduating from Flinders in 2019. And during my time at Flinders, FERS was a huge part of my whole university experience. I started out as the discipline rep for speech pathology um, and then in my third year I had the opportunity to be the co-president for Allied Health. Um, and if I had to pick my best experience from my time with FERS, it would probably be a combination of all the rural high school visits. So uh, I had the chance to go out to Renmark a couple of times and also to Mount Gambier. Um, and these visits are where you go out uh, with a bunch of other FERS members to a rural town, either for a day or overnight. And uh, I guess present to rural uh, rural high school students, encouraging them to come to uni and study a health degree and sharing what you love about your degree. But at the same time, you just get to meet a whole bunch of other uni students from different health degrees uh, and get to know what they're studying, but also just have a bit of fun. I think either way, if you sort of uh, know that you want to work somewhere rural after you graduate or if you just want to meet some other people while you're studying at uni, 
other word I think John refers is um, would be breath. Hello there. Uh, my name is Sam. I'm currently just an everyday member of FERS, but in the past, in 2019, I was the co-president of medicine. I'm currently a final year medical student and also the president of the Women's Medical Student Society. Uh, I decided to join FERS in my first year of uni because I was interested in rural health. Uh, I grew up in a semi-rural location and was pretty keen to sort of get involved in that throughout medical school and it seemed like a really friendly bunch of people. Uh, my favourite experience with FERS, it's pretty hard to actually think of what the best one was, it's quite a few. I think probably the RFPS experience where you get to go up with the Royal Flying Doctor Service uh, and see what they do for the day and sit in the plane and see what happens uh, at the base, I thought that was pretty amazing. But I also really enjoyed some of the other events like Women's Health Night uh, and even just getting to meet a bunch of like-minded sort of students was a really great experience, especially the fact that it was multidisciplinary, so it was all health sort of got me just out of being just in the medical sphere and getting to meet a whole bunch of people doing all of really, really interesting degrees. Um, in terms of where I see myself going in the future, I'm pretty keen in a career in rural medicine. I got to spend my third year uh, in the Rosa Valley, which is sort of like semi-rural, and had a really great time there, and pretty keen to go back to working in that kind of environment. Um, and I suppose I really got a lot out of FERS in my, well, not done with my time there, but over the past four years, I definitely learned a lot more about uh, rural health. I learned a lot about sort of like the inequalities in rural health and what we can do as students to really work on that. Um, I got to go to the NRHSN National Council and meet up with a whole lot of other sort of enthusiastic and like-minded students. Um, they taught me a lot and it was a really interesting experience. Um, and I also, like I said, I got to meet uh, so many different people around the uni from so many different degrees that I wouldn't have ever had a chance to interact with otherwise. Uh, and they've been a really great bunch of my friends. So yeah, it's been a really great experience and I definitely recommend you join up. So if you'd like to become a member of FERS, register at the NRHSN website, and if you want to keep up to date with all our events and what we've got going on, follow us on Facebook. much us in a nutshell. Um, we're over at the hub today um, with some freebies and some merch and we've got a big merch prize up for grabs if anyone um, wants to join up. Uh, it's free, there's a lot of fun stuff that we get to do over the year. Um, we also do some cultural awareness um, sessions and this year we're also doing like a first five minutes kind of first aid session as well which is looking really good and obviously the Riverland camp. So yeah, hopefully some of you might want to come join us. Thanks. to the Monash Playground. <laughs> oh, we definitely have to do that one. The Monash Playground <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I don't know where you're going on camp, but there's amazing places. Uh, we're going to Lake Bonnie at this stage. Camp Kedron at Lake Bonnie. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. So, awesome. See, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Can I also jump in there just to, just to kind of flag the opportunities for, uh, uh, well, I would say the interstate uh, placement opportunities, particularly in Northern Territory, Darwin and other regions around the We've got a, a, a really strong relationship, some great support for students up there. So, opportunities to do an anti placement. Yay. Great. Actually, that um, brings us back. Someone else had a question about placement, I think. Um, so, I was just going to say that um, if you have any burning questions about placement, ask Charmaine. But I would probably just hold off to get stressed about your placement for later in the year. Don't worry about that too much at this moment. Um, just be really aware, I guess, the one thing is to be ready for your placement, start thinking about that towards the end of your first year, because there are a lot of compliance requirements that you need to have in place, first aid certificates, other bits and pieces of training, uh, those things. So it's important to um, be aware that when you're going to be doing placement in the next semester, think right. about it early. That's one thing to... So for our undergrads, it won't be till the second Second year, that's right, yeah. So making sure that you're aware that it's coming up and being ready for it. Don't leave it to the kind of February of the um, year that you're doing it. I'm just trying to hide that screen, but it's not working because I wanted to add something on there. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> Why doesn't that go off the display? Normally, if I click on that, the display disappears. 
I don't know if Fiona, because we haven't done the room training. <laughs> All right, have we got the DUs here ready to go? We do, but um, I just wondered if everyone wants to have a bit of a stand-up yeah, stretch, stretch, walk around. Um, you've probably got one minute to get to the toilet if you need to, but um, this presentation hopefully is really interesting and engaging for you because you're going to hear from some people who have graduated from our program. Um, they're going to tell you about their career pathways so far. So, yeah, just very briefly, if you need to stretch, go for it, but please be back like in one or two minutes. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't go down and get coffee yet because we've got free coffee. Yeah, remember? not coffee, so, just literally if you're busting for the toilet. <laughs> I can't see a sign anywhere that says we can't eat in here and there's chocolate provided, so I think that's reasonable. Grab a chocolate, grab a water, go for it. Um, I was going to add um, and Felicity's name, so I oh. didn't want people to see me typing that, but no, neither did I. Yes. Do that before they go. Yes. Um, this is a really um, good teaching room. I love it. Mm. What, what's the training? Yes. Again, so I don't forget. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, so we do have Christy Sprites joining us from New South Wales, and I'm hoping this is going to work all okay. Christy, can you say hi so we know we can hear you? Hello. Ah, fantastic. Um, so this is the first time we've actually invited a developmental educator from interstate to come and join our brand new Bachelor of Disability and Community Inclusion and Bachelor of Disability and Developmental Education students, as well as some postgraduate students in the room. So we've got a couple of masters and a couple of graduate certificates. Um, and they would love to hear all about what you've been doing since you graduated um, and all about what you thought of the degree and any little tips you have. Um, we have got two other developmental educators here also, Felicity Crowther and Zoe Messenger. Uh, I've got the right surname. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they will also talk about their career pathways since graduating and, and some um, information regarding what they got out of the degree and those sorts of things. So, Christy, we would love for you to start because we know you've got other commitments coming up um, and just stay with us for as long as you can. Um, and tell us a bit about yourself, what you've been doing, and then if you're open to questions, if you've got time, that'd be great. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for inviting me. Hi, everyone. So, I'm Christy Sprotts. Uh, so, 2010 um, was when I started the journey of, I think the degree even had a different name, uh, Community Rehabilitation. Yep. Um, so I was very interested. I'd been a support worker for 10 years and in far, far south coast of New South Wales. And um, I was very interested in enhancing people's lives through education and training. And I had tried um, various pathways to up my skills and I was going to become a teacher and then a special needs teacher. And however, it just didn't, it didn't feel right for me. And then um, when I was really up, up for the next challenge in my life, um, this degree came up and it was by a distance. So I thought, okay, I can still live my life here in uh, New South Wales, raise my children and work and study. Sounds like a lot, it was a lot. <laughs> However, it was really, really rewarding. The degree in itself just has such a, um, a beautiful um, diversity to it. The psychology, the education, the health, sociology. I just loved it. So there was, I just got in there and, and did it and made it happen. And so I got to practice my skills in my employment. So I was um, the assignments and there was practicums where I had to um, do up hours and do up projects. I was able to do that in real time because I was already in the business. I didn't want to be a manager. I, I really just had um, just aspirations to just, just keep improving people's lives. 
and then um, I was recognised in my workplace, so they put me on as a coordinator of the, the day programs. And furthermore, after that, I became the educator. So I was then teaching staff and also still working with people on the ground, so to speak, people with disabilities, because that's where my passion is. And so that was taking me three, four years on down the journey, and I was nearing the completion of my degree, and I was um, offered to do the honours program. So you're all just starting. At, when I was starting, I didn't even know what honours was, but I actually graduated in 2015 with honours. And my project was about in, um, using technology in our particular um, project. It was an iPad to um, improve communication um, for someone with autism. Or well, it didn't have to be someone, but this is how it worked out. That was who my um, person came to be, a person with autism who was 22 and nonverbal. And he used his iPad. Um, as a speech generated device out in the community. And the findings were fairly positive and I wasn't going to put them in the drawer. So <laughs> when I graduated, I um, went, right, how can I keep going with this? I'm really excited and enthusiastic. And that was really innovative. So uh, I became my own, became my own business. So my business is Appy Connections. So I match the technology to people, um, people's needs and um, get them out there so they can improve how they interact, communicate and learn using the technology like all of us do. So it's been really rewarding. Um, and just little side notes of that is that I have had other offers in employment and I have had short term contracts with other employment opportunities that don't, because in New South Wales, developmental educators are, are not common. So um, we, I'm just quite often using my skill set to say, I have this skill set, I can do this job. And I've been accepted. So I'm on the National Panel of Assessors for doing um, work um, supported wage assessments for people with disabilities in employment. And I've also worked for um, Centre for Disability Studies in Sydney as an outreach coordinator. So I have diversified and I have used my skills and it's just really amazing because you, you just don't know where it's going to take you. So you just need to stay, stay open-minded and enjoy the ride. Cool. It was worth it. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, um, Christy. And what a journey as well. But I think it's a really good example of how we can include people all over um, the country and even sometimes some of our students are studying from overseas um, and how you can go through the entire degree, the pathways, um, the placements and the honours project which is the research project and then make a career of that in particular and so thank you so much for sharing that journey um, Christy. So the, the um, students who are interstate are hopefully watching this either live or watching the recording later on so um, they'll really appreciate that and um, we've popped up your business name so they can google and contact you um, if they're in New South Wales and they want a fellow developmental educator to connect with um, that would be really helpful so thank you so much are there any questions or comments um, and Christy as I said you can hang around for as long as um, yeah. you can um, and then we'll hear from Felicity and Zoe as well but any questions or comments Have you pressed the thing on the table? Sorry, thank you. Hi, yeah. uh, I'm just wondering how you found your journey as a part-time, I guess you were part-time students? Yeah. Not sure if you yeah. can hear that. Can you, you hear that? journey as a part-time student and how it worked out around, you know, everything in your life around it? I, I learned how to sweep the floor with headphones on listening to lectures. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. And yeah, it's it's just time management. It really is. Just blocking out when you're not working, you're studying. Yeah. Time management is actually one of the questions that students had that they were interested in having some tips. Um, so for anyone that's got 
tips regarding time management, particularly as you say, part time, juggling a family, juggling work, all sorts of things going on. Um, have you got any other hot tips regarding time management to, to be successful in your studies? I didn't watch TV for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it off. Good one. Good one. Yeah. Just um, enjoy the studies because they're very, it's very interesting what you learn. And I think it's probably a lot of people in the room thinking that's so far away from now, like this is their first day here at Flinders <laughs> and they're going four years, five years, six years away. Mm -hmm. um, it seems so far away, but I'm sure it goes pretty quickly, doesn't it? And like you say, make the most of it while you are at Flinders and you've got all these things available to you for free um, and all the knowledge base within the lectures and the resources that you get, um, make the most of that. And I think you said something really important there too, Christy, about um, making sure you make that time for the study, isn't it? So block of time that you use and you devote to the study. Yeah. Great question, thank you. Um, are there any other questions, comments? All good. Um, the group are gonna meet some current students soon as well, so they might have more questions there too around what, mm -hmm. how to do what, so. But thank you so much for joining us. So can we just please say thank you, round of applause for Christy. <laughs> I think the way the camera is set out, you actually can't see the room, but there's about 25 people here, 25 to 30 <laughs> students of various backgrounds, so thank you. Um, as I said, you're welcome to stay on as long as yeah. necessary, um, but we will pass over to... Thanks, Fiona. Do you have a preference? Felicity or <laughs> Zoe? We'll start with Zoe because she's closest to me here. So Zoe Messenger is a developmental educator um, with Disability Living. So without further ado, I'll let you talk about your journey, your study, your career path. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, I'm a walker and a talker, so I'm gonna walk around while I talk because uh, I'm a movement person and I get very jittery. That was one thing that I really struggled with in uni was sitting in lectures for long periods of time. However, your lecturers that are here are pretty cool and you know, they'll give you movement breaks like you had before, which is really nice. So growing up, I grew up with an uncle who had an acquired brain injury and quite a severe disability. And my whole childhood life and teenage life, I was like, no, don't want to work in disability. I don't want anything to do with it. It's way too close to home. Yeah, I don't want to go anywhere near it. But then as I grew up, I started dancing and then I moved into a dance group which was for inclusive people. So we had people with and without disability in the dance group. And then from there, my passion for disability grew. And I had taken five years off after high school, tried numerous different things, didn't really find my niche. My mental health was in a really bad state at that time. And I was like, hey, I'll go to a uni open day, see who I meet, see what I find, see where it takes me. And I met uh, Caroline Ellison, who used to be in charge of the degree, and she was like, oh, you know, it's a pretty good degree, see how you go. And I was like, oh, don't know. Ended up signing up, and here I am, yeah? Six years later, did the four year degree, did honors. It was a struggle. Honors especially was a real struggle. Um, it was a hard year and a half, and I personally had a really hard year and a half that year as well. Um, but when you're passionate about something, it's so much easier to learn about it, yeah? In high school, you would have done a whole range of topics that you didn't really have much care for. However, now you're learning about something that you're obviously passionate about, and you want to be here, yeah? That makes it so much easier to learn. And you will find those little nuances that you really enjoy and that will take you that much further. So following uni, I had a really bad year and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I ended up getting an offer from Disability Living to be a DU with them. I have been with them for two years now and it has been the best two years of my life. <laughs> it is so much fun. And we've gone from a team of three DEs to a team of 10 DEs in two years. We also now have uh, two skills enhancement workers who are current students of the degree who are working as therapy assistants for us. So we might write a program for a client and then they will help us implement that program and run the therapy sessions for us. 
that's also a really good way for some of our clients who might not have as much funding to get more bang for their buck out of their funding. When I came out of the degree and started as a DE, NDIS wasn't really a thing in the adult space, which is where I was working. So progressing through from working with a core block funding kind of um, method to rolling over into NDIS and working out what the funding was, who gets what and how, and how all of that works was really complicated. But within our team of DEs, we also have the DEAI, which is our um, committee board, which I'm also on, and they're always there to support you as well, as a student or as a practitioner. All right, so you can sign up now as a student. It's cheaper when you're a student. It's a little bit more expensive once you graduate. Is but it still free for first year students? I believe it is, yes. Excellent. Free for first year, and then I think it's around the $90 mark after that. And then once you graduate, it goes up even more. <laughs> but there's a website. There's lots of information on there as well. There's resources. There's people you can get in contact with. All the committee member names are on there. Um, some of them will be tutors in your lectures, in your tutes. Um, get in contact, yeah? In the disability field, it is still quite small in Adelaide. So it's not always what you know, it's who you know. And then who you know will teach you what you know, yeah? Keep those connections really good. Keep talking to people, keep asking questions, yeah? That's what being a DE is all about. You've got to ask the question and find the answer. Yeah? We all work together. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Anyone have any questions? Any questions for Zoe? Please, yeah, thank you. So can you yep. just repeat the question because I'm not sure that it was heard on the microphone. So the question okay. was, um, with the DEAI, do you have to sign up every year? Yes, you do. Um, you have to renew your membership every year. Once you're a practitioner, you also have to prove that you are continuously um, developing your profession. So you're doing lots of um, workshops and things like that, and you're engaging in clinical discussions and all of that. So there's a point system as well. Worry about that when you graduate. <laughs> but yes, yearly renewals. I was going to say, like, uh, yes, yeah, so the DAI is our professional association. So similar with uh, so Speech Pathology Australia for speech pathologists, um, APRA for other allied health um, and medical um, professions. So uh, again, um, uh, uh, um, this is the, the, the association that, that ensures that, um, you know, if you um, once you've graduated from the BDDE, the four-year BDDE degree, then you're eligible for full, uh, full, um, full registration, full membership to practice as a DE, and uh, be, uh, with your degree, with a, a behaviour support uh, practitioner as well too. So again, a great way of ensuring our ongoing professional competencies and uh, professional practice. Yeah, and hopefully this year, last year we didn't get much opportunity because of COVID, but usually we'll have about four social events throughout the year as well and that'll just be a come along hang out have a chat to everyone see what's going on sometimes we'll have a guest speaker who's talking about whatever they're doing in the industry at the time um, but usually it's just a really casual come along meet other DEs see what's happening in the industry and have a chat yeah thank you someone asked earlier about networking within the program like how do we get in touch with our peers and colleagues and so i think that's really critical is the dai is a key source there um, as a student member you'll be um, finding the information about those networking events as well and getting to meet people who could be your potential future employers um, is a really good way of meeting lots of people that have, are like-minded and have that passion as you said Zoe so mm -hmm. yeah thank you so much so without further ado I think we'll move on to Felicity um, in the interest of time to um, when you're ready um, go for it I don't think you're in view of the camera of the recording um, yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know what to do I'm, I'm sure and oh, hang on let me see if I can no you're right I stay where you are all good I zoomed out <laughs> take it away thank you um, so like uh, Christy, I actually completed the degree um, online. I was living in Wyala at the time, which is where I um, spent all of my high school years. And I started social work because the university had, I think, three different choices. 
of what you could do there. So it was social work, nursing, or engineering, and social work kind of sounded the best out of those three options. Um, and at the same time, I started working as a support worker for centre care. Um, I didn't know really anything about disability at all. I think um, we had maybe had one or two kids um, in school um, with, with Down syndrome and cerebral palsy, and that was the limit of my interaction with people um, with disability. So it was a really big eye opener uh, going into a support worker role where um, I was supporting people with um, some really complex communication needs um, and um, you know different behavioural challenges and things like that. Um, and I really wasn't enjoying the social work course at the time. Um, and one of the managers said to me that this course had just been made available to do um, online. So I decided to um, change into to this course and completed the first couple of years um, while living in Wyala and, and then decided to move down to Adelaide. I still um, decided to keep attending as an external student um, just because that gave more flexibility of being able to pick up support worker shifts um, around um, you know, when I wanted. Um, so, so that worked really well for me. Um, I uh, went through and did honours um, like Zoe as well. Uh, my um, honours uh, project focused on person-centred practices and training staff in group homes um, around them and what was the impact for people living in those homes um, when their staff had been trained in person-centred practices. Um, I actually uh, ended up doing that honours project because in my third year um, at university I did a placement with Minda um, and it was a, uh, for my placement I did a research project um, so the, the aim of doing that research project was to get an introduction um, to research to see if I liked it and wanted to go on and do the honours year in my fourth year. Um, since finishing um, the degree, I've had a really different career path to Zoe and Christy. Um, I haven't gone into kind of that more clinical DE role. Um, I have really uh, focused on uh, project work and working in service development. Um, and a huge part of my career path has been around self-advocacy and helping adults with intellectual disability to learn about what their rights are, um, to speak up for their rights and you know, to have the same kind of opportunities that everyone else in the community does. Um, so yeah, I've done lots of different work around that. Um, my current job is with the South Australian Council on Intellectual Disability. Um, and I feel really lucky to have this job. It's the absolute best job I've, I've ever had. Um, our organisation is a capacity building um, information and advocacy organisation for people with intellectual disability and their families. Uh, a huge part of our organisation is uh, working inclusively. So we employ people with intellectual disability um, as uh, ad advisors they and co-designers in all of our work and we also have people with intellectual disability on our board um, and so we, we support them to be able to understand all of the governance processes and contribute um, equally on the board to any of our other board members. Um, so it's yeah a really cool organisation to be a part of um, and I you know as you guys move into careers hopefully more and more organisations are working in that kind of inclusive and co-design um, model. Um, yeah, it feels really exciting to see that. Um, I have also gone on to do my PhD. I won't say how many years I've been doing it for. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've, in that time I've had a couple of kids as well and been working <laughs> full time. So I'm really trying to, to get my PhD done and, and that focuses on inclusive research with adults with intellectual disability. So I have a team of uh, researchers who have intellectual disability. Uh, we've been doing some training over the last couple of years to help them to understand what uh, research is and how they can go about it. They've then um, designed a research project that they want to do. They've gone through and gotten ethics approval for the research and are just um, starting recruitment for that. Um, and their project is, is looking at pets for people with intellectual disability. So, you know, what are the benefits of having pets? What are the barriers to having pets? Um, all of that kind of stuff. 
um, and my, my PhD research is looking at that journey. Um, so what's a, what are the outcomes for people with intellectual disability when they're involved in, in, in inclusive research and what are the outcomes for the research, what are the challenges and the benefits um, of involving people with intellectual disability on the research team. So, yeah. Excellent. Thanks so much, Felicity. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? What a journey, right? Yes, please. I've got a question for Zoe. That's yes, Zoe, yep. Um, You've still got your mic. Um, what sort of jobs or volunteer, volunteering opportunities that you recommend uh, with different organisations? Was we study um, EAD? Mm -hmm. um, Great if question. You can share with, I know you mentioned that there'll be a system uh, assistant. Um, is there any other path that they could have looked at? Yeah, so um, when I was studying, I wouldn't recommend this, but I had three jobs. <laughs> in three different areas, yeah. too much, yeah. But I would highly recommend getting some sort of role within the disability industry because then you can apply the knowledge that you're learning straight away. Um, so there's lots of roles within like mentoring, community access is a really popular one at the moment because then you get to do all the fun stuff. You get to take the clients out into the community and go shopping or to their appointments and go wherever they feel like going on that day, basically. Um, mentoring is a lot like that as well, however it's a lot more development based, so you are applying those skills um, around skill development um, and independent living a lot of the time. Um, we also have the therapy assistant role, there's a couple of other organisations who have that as well. Um, and they're really good because they are working under a DE or another therapeutic uh, practitioner, so you are really getting that hands on. Um, applied knowledge of what you're learning. Um, we do have a DES hub at the moment in um, Stepney where we're based um, with all 10 of our DEs and it's got therapy rooms downstairs, our offices are upstairs. Um, we've got different spaces depending on what the client needs are. So if anyone does want to come down and have a look at what that looks like, feel free to get in contact and we can organise a time as well. Thank you. That's a great question. Anything else? How are we feeling? Yeah, come on. Go um, for it. I have a question for QC. Um, um, currently, with the organisation, is it also focused on children with intellectual disability or mainly adults? Yes, yeah, so at the moment, most of the workshops um, that we and the support groups that we run are for adults with intellectual disability. We do offer uh, information service though, so. Um, students, um, people with intellectual disability, their families, really anyone in the community can call us if they've got a question relating to intellectual disability. So we often get calls from family members who are maybe looking for a support coordinator or they're looking for um, social activities for their son or daughter with intellectual disability or they're just wanting information about a particular topic and we can um, you know, find the answers for them. Often we'll know within our team the answer to their questions. If not, we'll um, connect them uh, with information. We're also starting to run um, capacity building workshops for families. Um, so um, although we don't necessarily focus on children, we do focus on um, you know, family members who might have young children with intellectual disability. Um, so yeah, starting to broaden our, our scope a little bit more to that. Um, it depends on the organisation and their kind of standards. In our organisation, if you're third or fourth year of the DE degree, then we consider you for the role. Um, in terms of mentoring and support work, technically you don't have to have any qualifications at the moment. However, a certificate three or four in disability is admirable um, if you've got it. I can also jump in as well too. So um, uh, as course coordinators, we have many people from the community approach us asking us to circulate job advertisements. 
Um, so uh, we use the uh, announcement um, forum on our general disability flow site, which will go to your email. So make sure that you, you connect uh, your Flinders email to whatever email uh, um, you, you usually use. Um, and there'll be uh, also regular um, uh, opportunities, uh, job opportunities in the sector as well too. So again, you know, if you hear of other job opportunities, please do forward them to us. So Michelle's referring to this flow site here. You'll all have available on your flow called Disability and Community Inclusion Courses General Information. So you've all got the access to that site as well where we put up job opportunities and announcements of all sorts, volunteering opportunities, yeah, those sorts of things. Fiona, do you want yep. to just scroll down to where the orientation information is so students know where to find the slides and so forth? Um, Hopefully it's all open for students, maybe? Yes, <laughs> should be. Okay, so this is what you'll see, um, and particularly for people watching the recording, if you wanna know where to find all this, um, we've got a tile here called orientation, and that's where you're gonna find the slides from today as well. And the recording will become available here as well, so you can come back and listen to this. If you felt like you missed something or you wanna go over it again, you can come back here. All right, so disability and community inclusion, general course information is really important. Um, are there any other questions or comments? And I think Christy did have to leave, but we've still got Zoe and Felicity here. Make the most of the opportunity if you... No? Sure. How are we feeling about that, everybody? It's quite admirable, impressive, inspiring, hopefully. Um, I think what it does highlight is that there are many and diverse career pathways that you can take as a graduate of these programs, um, particularly as well with the three-year program now, um, you're not necessarily qualified as a developmental educator, but there are lots of roles as disability professionals out in the sector that you're able to do with your three-year qualification as well. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much <laughs> for joining us and taking the time out of your very busy work schedules. Jennifer, really appreciate it. I'll leave some flyers yeah, perfect. at the back and a sign-up sheet if people want to join our mailing list if you leave your name and your Yeah, I can hand that back yeah, to you, no, no worries, you. yeah. Um, do you want to put it on that table there, oh, yeah, if that's sure. okay, because that's what people will be accessing. Thank you very much. All right, I think we're up to break time now, is that right? Coffee? Yeah, should we just of? introduce the students? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Sorry, we were supposed to welcome our current students uh, a little while ago, but um, that's okay because they're also going to take you on um, your tour after your coffee break. So we have Pauline, come on up. Come on down. Are we doing that again? <laughs> come on down. Pauline. Zoe, could you just ask Jordan to come in? Jordan. And James. James. And. Mira, did you just come along for the ride or would you like to? No pressure, no pressure. Thank you. And Baba, do you want to come out as well? Excellent. So we didn't mean for this to happen on purpose, but we have our postgraduates. So we have masters and is it grad says masters? Uh, no, or masters. masters and our postgrad coordinator, and we have our undergraduates and our undergrad coordinator. I'm just going to try and get this back so that the recording shows all of us again. It's pretty cool. I can control that. Zoom in, not too far. Okay, there we go. So do you guys want to quickly just introduce yourselves as well um, and just say uh, your name and what you're studying or something and then you'll have the opportunity. How about we go with name, what you're studying and one hot tip for our current students. How does that sound? Thank you. It's on, yeah, it's green. So go I'm for Jordan. It. Thanks, Jordan. Um, I'm in my third year of the BDDE course. Um, and one hot tip would be to get here early to get a car park. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name's Pauline. I'm in my fourth year of the BDDE. Once you get your tongue around that, because it takes a long time. Um, hot tip, part, apart from parking, is organisation is everything. Get yourself organised and also make the most of your wonderful tutors and lecturers and topic coordinators because they will make your life a lot easier. Thank you, thanks Colleen. Baba, do you want to go next? Yes. Hello everyone. I hope you all are excited about this new journey. 
I'm Muhammad Baba Shehzad. Um, I'm an overseas student coming from Pakistan. Um, usually we play cricket with Australia. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm uh, studying a master's degree in disability policy and practice. And as a student with a keen interest in um, computer access technology for people with vision impairments, I'm um, conducting a research uh, in my, as my dissertation on the challenges being faced by university students with vision impairments in using uh, computer screen readers for their studies. Um, it's a very exciting journey. Initially, it may look a little bit like, OK, how am I going to do it? Because this was my feeling. But trust me, within the first few days, I won't say weeks, days, you will feel that there is a specific energy that you will acquire, and then you will be very uh, much like um, passionate as I am now. So the hot tip from me would be to say and to ask questions whenever you have any question. There is a lot of support available out there. There are different um, people that you can access. So um, yeah, any, any question, anything that you have to um, know more about, you just ask. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, my name is James uh, from a country uh, which produces the fastest runners in the world. <laughs> so hopefully you know where that is. <laughs> I'm from Kenya and um, it has been an exciting journey for me uh, doing the Master of Disability Policy and Practice. It's my final semester now, started with Baba. And uh, what I have seen with this course and especially coming from uh, different culture is the support I get from my lecturers, very supportive. Uh, initially, I thought it was going to be very tough. In fact, I was feeling very frustrated the first semester. But by the end, through the support I got from my teachers and the students, uh, I was very hope. I mean, uh, I did very well, and uh, I continued to do very well uh, because I realized uh, for us, uh, for one to succeed. Uh, you always have to reach out to ask questions, as Baba has said. You don't just keep uh, to your own space. Reach out to other people. Reach out to the teachers. And uh, wherever the resources we have here at Prindas, it's you to work very hard to fail. Otherwise, you can't fail. Because you get a lot of support unless you really want to fail. It's when you fail. But otherwise, that doesn't happen. Because you got what you need, you got the support, and you're empowered to succeed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Mira. I'm an international student here. I'm from East Timor. And this is my second year for first semester. So it means I am in my third semester now. <laughs> and I really passion in studying disability because I am a person with disability as well. And I was working with disability people across many different disability organizations in East Timor. So hopefully by learning master in disability policy and practice, I will make a difference in East Timor. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We're, and we're really thankful for our students volunteering to be here today, once again, taking the time out of their busy schedules and preparations for the semester ahead. Um, and they are going to stay around with us um, until around 12 o'clock-ish um, to help you guys navigate the campus and ask some more of these questions um, and get the tips that only students know that our staff don't know um, and those kinds of things. We'll put you in groups of about four or five and um, um, you'll go around but I think without further ado it's break time and then if we everyone can join back here I'm gonna stretch the time out a bit is that okay or yeah that's okay I, yep. was, I was just going to I need to come closer just the microphone there um, do the job <laughs> I, yeah I was just gonna say that some people might not know where to find the coffee so maybe the tour starts with coffee Does great that idea sound like an alright idea so um, these yep. guys are well acquainted with where the coffee is um, and so I'm going to put some coffee vouchers on the table over there and then the tour can start. Um, 
We okay, but sorry, just before you do go, we'll put you in your groups if that's okay. So can I just get the postgraduate, I think we had two or three who are studying masters or graduate certificates. Um, if you guys want to join with one of the postgraduates, just so that you make sure you're talking about the postgraduate um, and some tips from that kind of perspective. Um, but then what I'll do is I'll just give everybody a number. I know that's a bit like back in school days, but just getting you to meet new people, getting you to interact with different people. So um, Jordan, you'll be number one, um, and Pauline, number two, Baba, number three. James number four, are you going to go together or are we going to have a number five? We've got four, okay. So uh, um, the postgraduate students um, will be three and four. Who were the postgraduate students again? So you'll be three and you'll be four, okay? So your postgraduate as well? Number three, sounds good. All right, so one, I'll get you guys to say the number so you're not hearing my voice more. Two, four. recording. Yeah. Great. Okay, thanks everyone. We'll just grab your attention for a moment. Welcome back. Hopefully you had the chance for a coffee break or whatever your um, beverage of choice. Um, I'll, I'll call it my um, caffeine of choice because I have to have caffeine otherwise I won't function. Um, so yeah and and you've had a bit of a tour and you sort of know at least where to go on your first day of lectures um, and you've built you've able to meet a couple of new people as well and the students that were showing you around were very helpful um, and now the purpose of this session here is just to talk about your actual topics um, you'll notice that the postgraduate students have gone into a different room to talk to Jamie and here's Michelle and I um, to talk through the topics that you're enrolling and what your plan looks like. Yeah. So Michelle's given everybody a handout. Except for the group. Do you need me here. to photocopy some uh, or? Yes. Yes, yes. or maybe. Um, we will. I'll, I'll show. I'll show everyone that it's actually up in the. Could you actually uh, jump yeah. into the the flow side? General flow side. Thanks. I'm still logged in as Jamie, but that's okay. I don't think that's right. Great. Right. Okay. So um, there's a few things that I wanted to bring everyone's attention to about the uh, the study plan in our course rule for uh, our, de uh, our disability undergrad degree. So you'll notice that the first three years is embedded within the four years. Everyone does the exact same topics in the first three years. Um, and this, uh, both degrees are designed to be very flexible. So we have a jump on, jump off, jump off model. So if you find that uh, you're, you're travelling along, you've, um, you've finished all your first year topics at the end of uh, 36 units, you have the option to exit with a diploma in disability and community practice. 
Uh, and then perhaps after a year or two, you may find, actually, no, no, I think it's time for me to you know, come back in. Um, I want to keep going so you can uh, 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 enrol back in, um, be readmitted back into the course. You'll get credit for that first year and then you can continue on with second year. So for some people, they find like sometimes life has unexpected things that happen to us and sometimes you go, listen, I have to stop studying now. There's other things I need to be doing. So rather than leaving uh, a degree with nothing, um, this is giving students an option to, to exit with, with some form of an award. We have the same with an exit, a, a, a new exit degree at the end of second year. So after 72 units, we've got, um, you can exit with an associate degree in disability and community practice. Um, and uh, for the students who are in the full four year BDDE, you can choose to exit at the end of third year with a BDCI, Bachelor of Disability and Community Inclusion. That can be really valuable if you find, actually I have to stop studying now, um, three year bachelor is fine because it meets my needs because I want to jump into a post-grad program and all I need for that is a three year bachelor to be eligible for a particular program. Um, or it may be, listen, I just want to, I, I, I want to jump straight into a, a role in community services and disability services in government, um, set up my own business doing uh, uh, advocacy, whatever it may be, and the three year bachelor will enable you to do that and that's all you need. So um, uh, for students who finish with a three year bachelor, um, you can also re-enroll to be, um, uh, not re-enroll, you can uh, reapply to be um, um, readmitted back into the BDD and finish that fourth year too. So again, we want people to be able to jump off and then come back in again um, uh, to continue on with their study. Um, and as I've mentioned before, that fourth year is um, the only qualification where you will be a registered DE and behaviour support practitioner and able to register with the NDIS uh, to provide um, um, PBS. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of flexibility in there. There's a couple of things that I wanted to point out. So, um, with uh, first year, um, we have an option topic that we've designed. So, for those of you who are full time, you will realise that you, 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 you know, there's, a, there's a list of topics for you to select from in that option topic. Can I just have a bit of a, um, does anyone want to shout out what option topics they have enrolled in, if you've enrolled already? Yeah. Foundation of Special Education. Foundation of Spec Head, fabulous, great. There's a few people nodding over yeah. here. Good, excellent. As DEs, we work very closely um, um, with uh, education as well too. We work very closely with teachers. We inform, um, there's a very trans, um, a transdisciplinary model of practice where, uh, again, you work with teachers, you work with other allied health professionals as well too, uh, GPs, medicos, the whole shebang. So having a, a good understanding of, or at least an introductory understanding of the role of spec ed is really, really oh, valuable. Hi. Okay, all right. Um, as an internal student? Yes, okay. Were all the classes full? No, it, I think it was saying that I didn't have like prerequisites for it. Oh. But then on another page, I can see that it didn't say anything. Okay, um, I would suggest you, you go to Ask Flinders mm -hmm. and say you're, you're in the BDD, you need to enrol. You, 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 yeah, I'm just curious why you can't enrol in that. Let's keep trying that way. Uh, if you have any problems yeah. still, then um, Fiona. Or myself. Um, I don't think Jamie has asked Flinders on her opt mm. What other topics have people enrolled in for that option topic? I did um, creative thinking. Excellent. Very interesting. Good. 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 Okay. Great. Um, so one thing I do want to flag, um, uh, we've asked for this to be put on the website, but I don't think it has made an appearance yet. No. Um, so this is what I've highlighted in yellow bold on this piece of paper here, but. If you have uh, completed a certificate for a diploma or another 4.5 unit topic from another university, this uni or another uni, in a course that meets the learning outcomes of our, of our degrees, then you can apply for credit for that option topic. So this might be relevant right now before you start a topic. You go, actually, no, I've, I've got a cert for a disability. I've um, I've done another, you know, I've done another, you know, few topics in another degree. Um, uh, you can apply, and I suggest you jump on and do that right now if this applies to you. And you can apply for credit, so that means you don't have you've only got three topics to do in that first semester if you're full time rather than the four. <laughs> okay. So Remember the Google of Flinders. So the, the uh, search tool there, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And we'll go to the search tool and we will type credit. 
transfer. Or you could just go to the See what happens. Right, so we are. transfer. So just, just search, so just, uh, I just did that by going to the Flinders homepage and then clicking on the search function and then just typing credit transfer. So I've also provided a link as well too, um, which on the electronic version of this form, which will be up on the flow site too. So you can just click on that. Cool. And all you need to do, so when you apply for credit for that, you need to attach the academic transcript um, from, so um, uh, show me some proof that you've done the Cert 4 or diploma or uh, uni topic that's easy sorry can I go, go for it I have already done that bit and then it responded with an email with all these things that we need to provide like um detailed description for learning outcomes course outline um prior correspondence how do we even know what our topic is okay um if you just write it uh, uh, all you need to indicate is just first your option topic and be DDE or BDCI yeah. Um, uh, what I need, or what Fiona and I need to see is essentially the academic transcript yeah. with your name on it yeah. um, and, the, uh, and, and if you've completed the course, so we know what that is. Um, for the purposes of this credit, um, that, should, that, should be, that should be sufficient, I would say. So just again, upload that academic transcript with yeah, that and it should be quite straightforward. It's not like, if you're applying for credit for another topic, so let's say um, research and study skills one. So let's say that you've done another very similar topic that's met the, the, the same learning outcomes at the same AQF kind of university level before, then what you need to do is provide us with the learning outcomes of the, the topic description of that topic. So we can see, yep, there's a great match there. But with something like an option topic, it's, it's a little bit more general for oh, us. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah. What happens if that, that topic is not um, anymore? Yes. Yeah, so if um, there. Oh, you sorry. The one you've already done. Okay. That you want to match up with the. the okay. So um, to be eligible for credit, it has to be done within the last ten years. Yeah. Um, and then you provide the, uh, the information, the descriptions of the, the, the topic from the year in which you did it. So hopefully you still have the, 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 to, you know, the topic book, le booklet or whatever it may well have been so that I can, I can see. Fiona, that I can see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, that's right. I was just going to show Michelle where you're talking about the bottom of the Word document. That's right, there. there's that hyperlink down the bottom um, of the credit. But also where you find that is on this flow site, general courses information, and you'll scroll down and you'll see BDCI and BDDE new study plan from 2021. That's that Word document. And it's also under the orientation tab. It's here as well. Yep. yep. And then you open that up. Good, okay. okay. So, um, uh, uh, and just letting everyone know, you've probably already figured this out, but many of the option topics listed there are internal uh, because we're one of the few places really around the university that offer online, on, on, uh, as many online topics as we do really. Um, if you're looking for an online topic, then the topic I'd suggest is uh, the psychology of surviving and thriving, which is such an interesting, great first you know, a topic to do as a first year, uh, first year student. However, that's available. It's online only, um, but it's available in semester two, and as a summer availability. So, a summer availability for that topic is, um, I think, it's from the fourth of January to like the start of January to around the mid of February. So, it's an intensive, and you would do that. Now, it's it's already finished, but you would do that. You know, just before you started semester one next year. So if you wanted to delay that option topic and pick up that topic as an online topic and do it after you've finished all of your other first year topics and you do it as an intensive before you start your second year topics, that's a great option too. And that kind of slows down the number of topics that you have to do all at once. So psychology of surviving and thriving, really great feedback from students um, and it's a, a, a very viable option. Yes, because it's not part of the 144 units that you need to complete or 108 units yeah, that you I need to complete your degree. Yeah. So, yeah. I have to choose one of those. That's right. Yeah. You can choose not to apply for credit and yeah. just do the topic. That's completely up to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a bit silly, but you actually need to enrol for the whole six semesters now? No. 
No, you can enrol just in semester one now and enrol in semester two topics uh, uh, later on. Yep, no, that's right, you can go yep, slowly. So you can even decide to start full time now and then you know drop down to part time from semester two. There are all sorts of points where we can, we can make changes. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. You don't need to register to be part time for that. Uh, there are two pages to this study plan document. One, one is the full time, um, and then over the page with all these numbers on there, this is um, our suggested part time uh, pattern of topics that you would you would enrol in. So we'd start off with in, uh, the, the, the the topics you do in first year. So they're the ones. So ideally, I would recommend, um, but it's not critical. But I'd recommend for, for new students to start off with perspectives and research and study skills one. It's not a deal breaker if you don't know in that case. Um, and then in semester two, uh, I'd recommend you do disability landscape and critical practice in uh, critical issues and disability practice. And then in your second year, you'd go and do the Intro to Disability Neurodiversity and an option topic if you still have one to do. And then et cetera, so we go from ones, then the twos, the threes, the fours, and from there on. Now you'll notice also that we have, um, some topics have prerequisites, and they're flagged with read. So um, these research and study skills topics, there are three of those, one in first year, one in second year, and one in third year. And these provide really critical uh, research competencies that you need to meet the DEAI registration requirements for a fourth year. Um, and also very, very valuable for students doing the three year program too. Um, but you do have to have passed one before you can uh, enrol in the next one and go from there. So these are really large um, uh, college, almost college wide uh, topics where you study these topics with other allied health students in, um, here at Flinders. So you'll be in these topics side by side with physio, with OT, with speech path, with um, uh, uh, health science, with you know everyone else because we're all going to be working together once we graduate as well too in, in, in trans D teams. So it's a great opportunity to learn these skills together. We also have, uh, so if you're doing the, um, the three year degree, um, there are two placements. There's one in, in second year, and there's one in third year. So particularly if you're part-time or you have a bit of an interrupted study pattern, um, it's good to know that um, both of those pracs are available in both semesters. So if you need to kind of move things around a little bit, you can do the prac either in semester one or semester two. Um, so you do have to pass prac one before you can, uh, you're eligible to enrol in prac two. So prac one is uh, uh, it's a minimum of, I think it's 100 hours, uh, where the university places you, you know, place it, you don't have to find a placement there, um, you're allocated based on where you live, um, on, you know, they ask you for some of your availabilities, um, if you're working three days a week, for instance, they'll know not to place you, match you in a place where um, those, those uh, uh, days will clash with your schedule. Um, so that's, that's your first placement. Um, and then the second placement is a little bit larger, it's 150 hours. Uh, and again, I think that's also a place, um, uh, we haven't quite, quite finished designing that curriculum yet, but um, more information for that will be coming, but that doesn't appear till third year. Questions are in the queue. Yes. Um, I was just wondering what the important key dates, and it says that the payment due date for semester one topics is Friday 12th of March. Payment, like what, I don't, I don't Yeah, if you've got voice. hex, you shouldn't worry if that's all set up. But if I think there is still an amenities fee that yeah, every student pays. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right. So your question about how to, to pay, pay that one? Yeah, I've just couldn't. I would go again. Any any of these Students. kind of admin questions, ask Flinders. Uh, so we've got like it's called like a frequently asked question place, but you can you jump on Ask Flinders and you can see if someone's already asked that question, or you can explicitly ask it, and then uh, one of the admin team at Flinders will will email you. Or you, you just back go to the students tab on the Flinders website and you yeah. go here fees. Right. 
sorry about that. There's no, some okay. of these yeah. technical yeah. kind of admin questions. There you go. Um, Throw right change on us. Cool. So if you, when you're on the Flinders home site, again, I think we said it before, but it doesn't hurt to reiterate this, just to remind you, when you're on the Flinders home site, just remember, it's so tiny, but it's in the top right corner there, um, that it says, now I'll make it too big, sorry, I'll try and make it big, um, that it says students. And when you click there, that's where you find all that further information. That's where I just found the one about fees. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Been spending a fair bit of time on, on the website, <laughs> <laughs> but when you mouse over, oh, it's supposed to, but it's not doing its thing. Students, anyhow, that's where you go to find all that information. Excellent. So, in terms of the first placement, uh, again, if you um, at the there moment the current credit guidelines, um, if you are have been working in the disability sector for the equivalent of a year. Um, then uh, you can apply for credit for that first placement. Um, so again, it's the same, the same credit application link, uh, and then the kind of evidence you would upload in that circumstance is a letter of support from your um, employer or employers detailing your role um, and your length of service, sort of roughly, so that we can we can determine yes, she's been working or who who she has they have been working uh, in in the disability sector for the equivalent of one year full time. And then we don't need to look and waive that requirement. So a letter of support on your employer's um, uh, organisational letterhead, and then you upload that with your credit request. So the three year degrees, there's only those two placements. Um, and in the fourth year, that's where, uh, again, um, we, we need to rigorously determine that you have the skills and the competencies to ethically and safely practice as a DN EDS practitioner. So that's where we have more placements. We've got one in, uh, in first semester, which is called PRAC3. So that's, again, another 150 hour placement where you work under the supervision of either a DE or another allied health professional i.e. perhaps a, a psych or a, an OT or a speechy perhaps. Um, and uh, in that placement, you're delivering therapeutic supports and we're making sure that you're able to um, administer and interpret the assessments and the, uh, write the reports in, in ways that um, we uh, are, are going to be required as an allied health professional. And then in second semester, you're doing a PBS PRAC. Uh, so after you've already done three PBS topics, this is where you're going to be supervised by a behaviour support practitioner. I think again it's about 150 hours, mm. 100 or 150 hours, where you're supervised and mentored by a PBS practitioner to again make sure that you are safe and competent to do so. So um, this is a very evolving space in the disability sector in Australia, PBS. Um, and we're really at the fore making sure that um, we're really extending um, the professional competencies of people working as PBS practitioners. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there who are working in PBS who do not have the training or um, the skills or competencies to do so. It's, it's, it's growing. Um, that's why we want more and more students to do degrees such as this one. We also have a postgraduate um, a postgrad certificate in PBS. So people who have graduated from other degrees, from physio, from psych, from earlier versions of our degree, can come back and do the grad cert and PBS to get those competencies to, to practice as PBS practitioners. So it's a slow movement, but uh, you guys will be out there um, uh, at the forefront of this, uh, showing, showing the rest of Australia this, this is why we should be uh, investing in um, uh, fully qualified, why we should be moving towards fully qualified PBS um, practitioners. Interesting space. There's a few cowboys out there, I can tell you. <laughs> okay, good. Um, great. So, are there perhaps any other questions around the study, the study plan so far? Yes. So just based on um, professional expertise, the placement, the first placement, right. only on, on, based on, on, on experience. Yep. However, if you've done another undergrad degree, so uh, um, what, what universities, um, so a bachelor degree is an AQF um, six, six and seven for honours. 
Yes, so uh, AQS, so Australian Quality Framework 6. So if you've done another similar AQS 6 level uh, um, a series of topics, then tell us, show us, we can do, you know, show me that there's a match between those learning outcomes and some of these learning outcomes, and then we can explore credit for that. Good. So the reason, oh, sorry, that's okay. I'm just um, going to say, is, and, you know, I've just highlighted on the screen, it's essentially those two that you're applying for credit for. Yep. The option topic or the, the practice. Yep. No, good question, Sam. Um, developing something called a handbook that's going to go live a little bit later in the year so it's not terribly helpful right now um, but by August this year there's going to be a, a handbook where you can easily search every topic and filter it for online availability only uh, summer uh, you know summer only or, or you know online and summer only uh, and see all the topics across the university that will be available then at the moment it's a little bit hard to do that isn't it yeah i'm just not sure if it's just a topics page if yeah. you do that at all um, at the moment uh, our dsrs topics um, are only available in semester one and two sometimes particular semesters um, however, we're very hopeful in the future that um, if we continue to see significantly increased student numbers that the university will give us more staff and we can run things like more, you know, like summer availability topics and things like that because we hear so regularly that that, that, that hits students, students' needs in the current, current climate. Yeah, but so were you thinking about specifically about summer topics for that option, um, a topic, or were there summer availabilities for more topics across our degree? only summer topic that I've found so far but uh, um, once this handbook comes live then we'll see them all <laughs> um, but yeah no most sadly we don't we have don't have too many others at this point see the timetable until you would roll in roll. That's yeah, so you, you should be able to. these links will take you to the topic page. The trick is when you do click, so perspectives on disability for example is your first year topic, when you get to the topic page it's not obvious, it doesn't tell you up front when it is or anything like that. You've got to scroll and you've actually got to open it as well so you have to click on it. Yeah, so this is publicly available information for anyone, even those without a fan. Um, you can s search for the topic and you get to the topic page. And then when you scroll down, down here it's got timetable, but you do have to click. Um, so it's a little bit hidden, um, but that will show you exactly when it's all on. And it'll let you know, for example, that this one here is an online lecture. So even though it's got the times, 9.30 to 11, it's online. And then there's all these internal tutorials if you're an internal tutorial. Does that make sense? Yeah. So clicking on the topic page. I know these things are so tricky sometimes. Yeah. Is that right? Is that, will that tell you which one she's for and all that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It, yep. It shows you there when you click and you go to timetable. Um, these are the... These are the tutorial times available for perspectives and it usually does have full. Oh, no, it doesn't. Should it say full, um, Michelle? Are any of them full? Do you know? Maybe they're not I full. It should say full. Yeah, it looks like none of those are full, actually. So they must be still available. I think I hit 30. Let's have a look. Research has taken us into 2022. So again, if you find that you, you there's a topic that you need to enroll in and internally full, it's full, full, full please full, please enroll in the full, online availability. <laughs> so there's a couple still left, Michelle, for yours down the bottom but there. But it does state there. But it does show you, yeah, yeah. So there's no option you have to do the online one. Well, what you could 
do. So there's waiting lists for internal classes. Um, you could uh, just have a crack and see how long you before you blink. <laughs> um, personally, I would probably just enrol in the online availability. So this one here is mm. called to re-exam or yeah. help to answer um, that's right, yes. Uh, some people um, unenroll from certain Couple topics, left, yeah. you know, particularly after the first couple of weeks, they might enroll in an internal tutorial and then and then withdraw. Um, and so that's being on a waiting list will, you know, then you'll be sort of shuffled in. Um, but, uh, yeah. So that HLTH. Right. Internal. Yes. And then I got an email saying basically you're going to get kicked off on Friday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the wait list yeah, ends. Right. So I ring external. Yeah, don't don't ring external. Yeah, yeah. First in, um, first serve, isn't it? In terms of the numbers in the rooms, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, wait list. Yeah. Like that. Uh, I I think when you enrol, because I noticed yeah, that yeah, there's. Yeah, you click on the timetable, yeah. and when you're in there, you can wait list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you get kicked off like that, that's they right. said that that was. Um, Last week, yeah, the wait list doesn't have an end point. Yeah. They don't stay on the wait list. Yeah, and then you're forced to make decisions. If you're going on but do long contact long. the topic coordinator though, like Michelle was saying, because sometimes if there's been unenrolments, they can allow you an exception um, to enter one of the other tutorials. If your preference is to be here on campus, just speak to the topic coordinator because the, you never know. There's lots of possibilities. And yeah. quietly, because um, the internal tutorials in, for example, 1211 are uh, not compulsory, after a couple of weeks there will be probably a, a number of students who will decide, no, listen, I think I'm feeling comfortable with just uh, the online availability. Um, so they're enrolled still internally, but they're not coming to tutorials after a certain point. So. Um, yeah, yeah, I think still let me know because uh, I wonder what the options are. Mm. Mm. You should be allowed to come in. Mm. Just let me know. <laughs> okay, good. Um, question? Yes. When it comes to uh, interview topics, um, the show was in the flow uh, where I can find everything so uh, where I can find the question. I know that one is. Yeah, so if we jump back into perspectives. We've got perspectives here. Um, there it is, no, perspectives. Um, yes. Yeah. So Jamie's site perspectives and intro yep. to disability look very similar. Uh, we've designed them to be as identical so we, as we, we can. we just close all the tabs here. That way you can see what's available. So you've actually got um, general topic information. You've got communication. That's where those discussion forums are. You've got information about the assessments and then you've got some resources. And then each week will come under here, but Jamie's obviously only got week one ready available for you. Um, so the reading information, I think Jamie said was under each week, wasn't it? No, the link as well. If you go up to in here. Resources. That's right. And That's we have reading. readings. There it is. Is everyone so, following along? Yep, yep. all good. Um, yeah. Also, within each weekly module, um, we also specify there which readings you need to do, just as a bit of a reminder. But you'll find so each of them here. in that link. Yep. Is that okay? So, so usually topic information has got a list of readings. It's very, very rare that you'll probably need to come and actually find anything in hard copy these days. Um, one of the amazing things of being a student at university is you get free access to all of our online databases. The access you have to information at your fingertips during these years at uni is, will be unprecedented. You will miss this when you are a, 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 a graduate. Um, there is nothing that you cannot find. <laughs> there is no article that, you know, like my, my husband works in finance, so he often says, oh, Michelle, can you just find me the study on this thing? <laughs> so yes, no, but everything really is about online online these days. The sizes of libraries have really shrunk and you'll notice as you walk around it's mostly spaces to, to study and, uh, and stuff you like to have. If, if, if library is not compulsory, how about the workshops? 
if the tutorial isn't compulsory, okay. So um, for the first, for our first year topics, um, so for perspectives and intro to disability, um, we don't have workshops. So there are workbooks that contain the small little videos and the activities that you need to do each week. And then there are tutorials. So it's either an internal shoot or an online shoot. So if you're an online student, you can jump on and join a, a live collaborate session. Um, and we've got different times that they're going to be available. But again, then again, they're not compulsory. They're there for students who really want to hash out, discuss, talk about something live with another person in a synchronous environment rather than everything just being asynchronous. So basically, if your classmate is uh, a first reading, they join and they're the content. Uh, yes, so you do the readings, you work through the weekly workbook activities and then uh, you, you, you submit the assessments. Yeah, that's true. So this is an example for perspectives. The first thing to do is introduce yourself. So that's to help you get into the rhythm of posting online. So Jamie set this up so that um, she gives you the explanation and then you click here and you type um, an introduction. And then you can just work your way through everything. So I guess the thing to be mindful of, and this is a, a trick for beginners to uni, um, the, uh, the amount of time that's required for each, um, for each topic. So for a 4.5 minute topic um, at, at Flinders, um, uh, students uh, um, advise that the guideline is about 10 hours per week over, over the, 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 the course of the semester. So consider full-time study as a full-time job. So physically, in your, in your daily schedules, in your diary, block out certain hours, certain blocks for each, for each topic for you to you know, um, work through the material. It'll take um, an hour or so, roughly, depending on how fast a reading you are, to go, you know, to go through a single topic's readings, making sure you're familiar with the content, you know, you're doing a bit of Google searches about some of the key words, making sure you understand what that reading's about. It might take you um, a couple of hours to, um, to go through the weekly online activity book activities. Um, and uh, then if you're coming to tutorials, it'll be about another hour and a half as well too. Um, plus the, uh, the time that you'll spend preparing for the assessments as well. So assessments, sometimes, you know, it's, it, you know, it's hard and fast. You spend a lot of time more intensively at certain points across the semester. But again, keep in mind roughly 10 hours a week for, for, for a single topic. So again, make sure you kind of block those out. Um, when, if you're working, if you're working full time, if you've got a lot of different responsibilities, put those times in your diary. Otherwise, Netflix is too easy. You know, there's so many other things that are too easy to kind of slip in. And then semester's moving on and assessments are due and you find that you're too stressed. <laughs> No, so the key to study, the key to, you know, whether you're internal or online is, is organisation. Um, also keep in mind some key dates. So we know about um, census date. Uh, census date is in week four. I'm, getting, I'm just going to do my trick okay. and search key dates again on the So census answer. date is the, the last day for you to withdraw from a topic without, um, uh, without paying, so you don't have to pay for the topic and you won't get a fail on your academic transcript. So you've got the first full three weeks to make a decision, am I coping with this topic? Am I coping with my study work life balance? Do I need to cut down perhaps to, uh, to, uh, and just focus on a couple of topics? Um, or uh, do I need to perhaps kind of like defer my study for a semester and pick up again a bit later? So make that decision in the first few weeks. It gives you a bit of a chance to kind of look at the assessments, look at the topic, get a feel for it and go, yeah, I think I can manage this. Or, whoa, no, I think I've bitten off too much, you know, more than I can chew this semester. So make a decision uh, and make sure that if you need to, you withdraw by census Second date. of April. What we don't want, and this happens a lot to newbie first year students, is you don't do anything that first semester. You feel overwhelmed. Um, you get a fail grade at the end because you haven't, haven't made a decision or, or made an action there and you've got a fail and you've paid for the topic. So that's not great. Um, if that does happen though, um, and if there has been something that um, has been quite significant that's happened in your life, there's been a, a, a significant personal circumstance that was 
unanticipated, is that is that mm -hmm. the term? Special circumstances. Special circumstances, and this can be any number of things, but things that, that weren't anticipated uh, before you enrolled in the topic. Um, then please do speak to uh, a course coordinator or a student experience um, person because we can support you to apply for fee remission. And the way you do that, again, search fee refund. <laughs> fee refund or fee remission. And you, you've got 12 months to do that after you've failed a topic. So a lot of students, again, kind of, you know, something awful's happened in their life. They've kind of disengaged, fails for the whole semester. Um, please come and speak to us about that because there, there may be things that we can do to support you to take those fails off your transcript and to make sure that you get refunds for those topics as well too. Okay, so just keep that in the back of your mind. It's got a list here of reasons um, of how you can get that Medical, fee family, refund. Medical, personal, employment or course related reasons. Mm. So we are here to help you um, if something big does happen in your life or even if you just feel like you're struggling, that you're overwhelmed, uh, something's unclear, um, this is an adult learning environment, um, we're going to wait for you to come to us and say, listen, I think I, I think I need to have a chat about this. Um, so it is a different environment from other educational environments, it still needs its own beast, but um, uh, we, are, we are genuinely very supportive, but we need you to come and let us know if you're feeling that you're struggling a little bit first. Guess what? You can search for non-semester topics. Oh, great. Ta Back to that question before, when someone asked for summer topics or non-semester yep. intensive topics, I found it just incidentally when I was on the key dates page, so when it gave me these all critical enrolment dates, there was a link, I don't, don't overlook these links, the link was to the topics for 2021, and that led me to here, being able to search via timetable. So I can search for all the topics that are available in non-semester. There you go. Um, I mean, you might try and look for a particular area as well. You can narrow it down to. Obviously, if you know you're interested in one of these areas or not, um, then you'd click on one of those and you'd click on non-semester. Um, and that'll tell you when it is and what there is. And if you go there, hopefully we get a few options. So, well, that's in Malaysia, so that's not very helpful. <laughs> that one's in the Barossa, so there you go. Um, but that's because I didn't choose any area. Are they the only ones that are available? Oh, non-semester one, non-semester two, that as well. That is that the is that the code for the site one? Is it N S one or N two? No, summer S U. Oh, S U. That one. Summer. There you go. Sorry, that's the one I should have clicked on. Summer. This will give me all of them. There you go. Okay, what's your business? But, but no, currently no DS. No, no, we don't have DSRS topics in summer, but for the option topic, yeah, that's right. So there's a couple of other ones you may be interested in as your option topics. Is that right, Michelle, that's that you it. could do? Yeah. Archaeology, um, there's another psychology one, screen production techniques. <laughs> you probably wouldn't want to go for something that starts with a seven, because that's later down the track, that's higher that's level. Honors level um, but the ones that start with ones or twos, yeah. theology, all, all there you go. Right. Okay. Anything so that was just done the time. Um, just a question, Michelle. With the uh, workbooks, yes. Google fashion, like guild trees and printing. Yes. So, <laughs> obviously, it's great online. So, can you. Really good question. Yeah. You, you can print the workbooks. Yeah. You can print the You can export. I think you can export. Um, it's tricky because you've got to click on a few things to get to it and I am not uh, sure if I'm really It's not easy because it's not designed really to be printed. Um, so it's, like anything it's this, can you see that sorry, yeah. on the screen? Yeah. yeah, it's this little function in the corner here which is like a setting sync tab and it says print book or print the chapter. So if you want all of it, you can print the entire book and then what it does is produce a PDF for you with all that information in there. Um, it doesn't necessarily have the questions, or it does have the questions here. There you go. Mm -hmm. So that's got the discussion questions. Some of them that will be within the links that you need to click on. So here, for example, you see you have to click on that link to actually get to the questions. Um, so be mindful of that as well, David, um, that you might need to actually click on that in order to print it. But that was so once I went into the activity book, it's just this little yeah. option at the so top that's the here. Full book, and this book has one, two, three, four, five, six chapters in it. Nice. So make sure you've left all of them. So 
yeah, book is what you want to print, <laughs> or chapter. Is that okay? Yeah, navigating flow, you'll get used to it over time. It's just click here, click there, just trial and error. You won't break anything. <laughs> Any other questions? How are we feeling? Ready to go or overwhelmed or not sure or let's just see what happens. <laughs> it was a bit of an information overload, wasn't it? There was it? one thing I wanted to mention. Oh, sorry. Yes, you go first. Yes. Again, that's going to vary topic by topic. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and in, in a COVID world, things are, are changeable as well too. Um, but um, first semester, for instance, and the way we've designed our, our DSRS first year topics, um, uh, if you're internal, the only reason you're coming on campus is to attend your internal tutorial uh, for one and a half hours every week. Um, the rest of it is all online. Um, that's right. Yes, the lectures are uh, in embedded, already embedded as little pre-recorded clips. So we've been working quite hard to record ourselves. <laughs> no, so for first semester topics for uh, perspectives and intro to disability, even though because um, we weren't quite sure we were going to be ready to do this when we were setting up the topics uh, last year. Um, uh, even though the timetable says um, the, the lectures will be online on Mondays from this time to this time, um, that's not the case because we're working, we're working to embed all of, have all of those lectures already ready so you can work at your own pace. You don't have to be um, watching uh, on the computer a, a lecture at, on Monday at that particular time. It gives you more flexibility. And then the tutorials, either online or face-to-face, -face are your opportunity to ask questions about that. We also have online little question um, discussions, so you can um, ask, okay, so in that lecture clip there, you were talking about that, what does that mean? Or is this an example of that? So there, there's a few different ways you can engage and ask questions and discuss. Some people love just working online and just typing. Um, other people want to talk to someone, either via um, a collaborate or in a face-to-face -face mode. So that's only semester one? Semester two, we're designing all of our topics, so it will be that way as well too, I think. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just to cater for as many diverse learning styles and learning needs as possible. But uh, no, so there has been a shift culturally away from um, the internal lecture, where you come to a large lecture room and you sit there for two hours listening to information. There's a lot of research evidence that that's not the most effective way of uh, learning and absorbing information. Uh, and so that's why we've been um, pivoting towards um, a more interactive, small chunk bites of information. Watch something, you know, uh, uh, answer some questions about it, think about it, you know, do something, watch, do something, talk about it, rather than just sit there statically on Facebook. <laughs> we can always refer back and watch it again. Exactly. Exactly, that's right. Um, we'll also have uh, um, the lecture notes um, up on, on there as well too. So again, if you want to print out the lecture notes as a PDF, uh, um, old school, you might want to write notes on those lecture notes while you're listening to the, the little bite-sized recordings. There are things you can do as well too. So for my topic, uh, Intro to Disability, um, uh, uh, there are two tests. So there's, there's information that you have to learn about biology essentially. Uh, and then we're testing you, so writing notes is a really important way of consolidating uh, that, that kind of um, information, the medical information. Um, so yes, you can do it that way or whatever way, annotate the PDF yourself, whatever way it was going to work for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you've spoken a lot about the tutorials and the lectures. What about the workshops? Would they be a similar thing or we're not doing Yes, so workshops um, are uh, not in first year, not in our DSRS first year topics, but I think we do have workshops in our DSRS second and third and fourth year topics. Have you seen something? Well, I've got on here for um, health, like, uh, health. Yeah. like workshops. Yeah. Yeah, They've got a workshop. Got a few. Yep. Yeah, I've got so, a few. really, um, I think it's, oh gosh, 
the difference between a tutorial and a workshop might be a bit semantic. It's going to depend on how the topic coordinator is running that and how they're designing their learning activities. But for that particular one, I think it's, it's, it's an opportunity for you to work in um, small groups actually doing an activity together. Um, so uh, it could be in this kind of environment where you're doing small little things together or you're on your computer and you need to do something and there's opportunities to ask while you're doing it. So that tutorial, you're all working collaboratively in a room together. Unless you're specifically told. Yeah, that's right. Health 1010, yeah. bring your laptop, exactly. So that's like, you're going to be using, learning how to use the library databases and how to you know, do a whole stack of research related um, activities and you need your laptop to do that. Yep, yep, absolutely. Great, so same with um, our other DSRS topics. If you want to bring your laptops to tutorials, that can be also be very, very helpful um, because you can you know, double check um, things, you know, engage, find other resources while you're talking that will inform some of your, some of your discussions. So bring whatever tech you have. It's always helpful. I'm just passing around treats. So oh, good for <laughs> Great. Um, we've talked a little bit about access, disability access plans, but we also yeah, awesome. Thank you. We, so there are disability access plans if you have um, a, 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 a disability. However, there are also uh, care. Are they calling it still carer access plans? So if you provide support to another person uh, in your life, then you can also go to the Health and Counselling, um, Disability Health and Counselling Office. I'm just using the Google Offenders again, the, yeah. the search tool, and, Disability Health Counselling. Uh, and you may be eligible for a carer access plan that also enables you to apply for extensions without, without providing additional evidence. So, um, uh, yeah, that can be quite, quite helpful, access particularly for many people in our area. So that's if you have a disability yourself, it tells you what to do there. It doesn't have anything about the care or one. It's a little bit more hidden, actually. Yeah. But our disability health and counselling services here at Flinders are amazing. Um, uh, we've got, you know, Boltfield GP clinic up there. Um, we've got uh, our free counsellors and psychologists. Um, uh, and I think it's a well, no, no, maybe not a psychiatrist, but counsellors and psychologists who provide amazing support. It does not have to be uni related, it can be anything in your life. Um, and, uh, and of course the, the disability support service up there as well too. So um, if anything is causing, um, just anything, um, uh, go up and, and make a time, make an appointment, book yourself in, uh, get in early and um, we're here to support This your, is really important journey. too, Michelle, this one, that was really critical during yes. COVID, but Ooh. any time. After hours crisis support lines, so um, the support, the, 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 the counselling services are not only available during ox hours, 24-7, you can contact that, 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 that number. And it's always free while you're a student, make the most of it. <laughs> any other questions, comments? I've got a little finishing up activity that if you yes. if you no, that's wonderful. all the information you need to. All okay, good. All right, I'm, I'm just going to wrap up. How are you feeling? One word. Throw some words at me. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. <laughs> that's normal. Normal. We don't like to use the word normal, but it very much is. What else? Reassured. Still excited at this table. <laughs> From this side of the room, how are you feeling? Not sure. <laughs> Confused. Okay. It mixed message. Mixed feelings in between. Yeah. Um, that's okay. The uh, finishing up activity. I'm just going to get you to do. Is just pass around a sticky note. Just grab two sticky notes, whatever colours you like. There's a couple of blue ones, red ones, orangey, yellowy ones. Um, and what I like you to do. So just grab two. On one, I'd like you to tell us what was good about today's session. And on the other one, I'd love you to share with us any suggestions you have for improvement, like don't talk so fast, or give us more time with the students, or more DEs on the panel, or whatever you think could have made today better for you, um, or something we might have missed that you feel is really critical. Anything you'd like to comment on about what was good today and what suggestions you might have for improvement. So just pick two sticky notes. Um, 
I've got quite a few here separated around the place, so you just peel one and hand them on if you like. Um, so what's good? And what's most good? Good. And then I'll get you to stick them on the whiteboard for us, and we'll just have a little look at. You don't need to put your name on it. Totally anonymous. So please write whatever you like, but be respectful. I'm hoping I've got enough here. I couldn't find any sticky notes. I used to have the drawer full of them, but there was none in my drawer. I'm oh, very ashamed. Just be careful to peel trying to get one off, because it's like, like tricky to find. While you're doing that, I'm just going to, I've got to bring my whiteboard um, eraser, but I'm just going to double check. I feel like we've captured everything that you brainstormed at the beginning. Yes. Yes. Turn it in was one we didn't talk specifically about everybody, but turn it in is something that your topic coordinators will tell you a lot more about. Okay, it's all on the flow site and they'll explain that to you. That's to avoid plagiarism and to make sure that academic integrity, that means that you haven't copied your work from somewhere else, is actually a program that checks that. Um, so when you submit your assignments, the program does a text matching and it has a look for everything that's available, including previous student assignments. And if there's any matching, it lets us know so that we can support you through what was happening in that instance, okay? It's really about academic integrity, making sure there's no cheating going on, <laughs> um, that your work is your best work. Oh, yes. yes. There's one thing I wanted to mention about that. When you're writing a paper, it's great to support other students, you know, kind of like, you know, um, provide feedback on each other's work. However, because we live in an online environment, uh, you need to protect your own work. So um, what we advise you not to do, do not email someone or give someone an electronic copy of your work because once you give it to someone else, you have no control over what happens. So we have awful situations of other students then copying and pasting your work and then saying it's their own work and then it's picked up on Turnitin and then we get this whole drama. So if you do want to support other students with their work, perhaps make a time to meet them in the library or something like that and then provide some comments on a hard, a hard copy version. Don't email someone your own work because then you've lost it and you're also implicated in academic integrity there too, unfortunately. So that's just something to keep in mind. You're, you've got control of your own, your own work there. Yeah. That's right, so some topics do do um, like wikis and things like that with group work, so you will come across that from time to time. Um, however, for the majority of things where it's an individual piece of assessment, like an assignment or an essay or a report, uh, yeah, no, it's individual. That's right, good. Right. So you would, you would submit a draft at least a week before it's due to turn it in, and it's going to give you a computer-generated match of everything on the internet that matches those, you know, sequences of letters and everything. And it will, it will give you a report and it will highlight all of your sentences that have an immediate, complete match with something else. So you can say, oh wow, yeah, no, it's picked up, I haven't quite um, paraphrased appropriately this sentence from this journal article or from this government report. I really have to have a, another go at making sure it's my own words here. Uh, so that gives you a bit of an, a heads up what the Turnitin report will see. You make the changes and then you submit your final version to the assignment Dropbox area on Flow. So to make sure you, 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 you do your assignment at least a week in advance, throw it up to Turnitin, get the report back, make changes you need and then you submit your final paper. I was just going to say, would anyone like to share what they learned today? Because I was going to share what I learned today. I'm teaching in this classroom and I learned that if I want to reach the top, I need to wear high heels. <laughs> but also um, that I might need to just write down the bottom because you can't actually reach up the top. Or a little stool. Or to use that table that yeah. turns into a whiteboard. That's pretty cool. All right. Does anyone want to share anything? comments, feedback, get to know each other, you'll see each other around, you'll support each other. Oh, everybody's just frozen. <laughs> now what are you going to do next? You're going to walk away and 
forget about it until next week? Or <laughs> what do you think? What is everyone going to do next? Get your idea. Come on. While you're here, make the most of it. Absolutely. Well, yes. If you like, walk up to the main cabs. It takes 10 minutes if you're fairly kind of, you know, fairly confident with walking. Um, uh, it is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, over the bridge through the pine forest. Um, there's some big TV screens along the way. Very bizarre. Um, but it is a gorgeous walk. Go up there, have a coffee, get a drink from the tavern, check out some of the food, some of the live music and stuff that's happening up there. Check out that library. All sorts of things. They've got shops. How do you <laughs> get up there? Great question. <laughs> Took me a year to work it out when oh, I started no. here. <laughs> it's not very well signed either, is it? There's a little still, hidden pathway. so much work on signposting around Flinders. And yeah. Still that's not quite clear. Um, okay, but if you walk uh, um, past the ASMS school, the, the year 10 to year 12 school, oh, that's right, who always come down and use the cafe at a particular time at lunch every day, and all they eat is hot chips and Coke, so make sure you don't go and try and use it at that particular time, they're like a swarm. Um, but, uh, yeah, so if you, you walk past that school, uh, and then there's a little path that goes kind of like around the childcare centre. There's a... Oh, how do I even explain this? Right, it's really, you have to be on the road. Oh, cross the pedestrian crossing. Cross the where pedestrian that road crossing, is. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> is that past the flat? Can we, can we Google Maps it? Like, that's the probably the best way campus. of explaining it. There's Does anyone the, do... There's the um, Lost on Campus, yeah. which basically combines Google Maps with... Um, we got a live view. ...the uni campus. Perfect. So, yeah, lost um, on campus. Download the app. And and you can like um, you can like search specific buildings and places to go. Brilliant. And it takes you straight. Like it gives you a route. Oh, that's Let's perfect. Try that. How do I do that? Here, just go there, and that'll show us where we are. <laughs> I'm not sure that's terribly helpful either. You can zoom in first. Where are we? So you've got to zoom in a bit more, I think. Yeah. Right. So we are here in this building, and there's the math, science, and math school. So if you kind of walk out around, let's go away. Walk, walk out or around the science and math school, in? Um, and then you know, across the across the road, and then here between the, the Flinders University um, a child care centre, there's the child care centre here. You kind of like walk around, and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that really, it's really Where's great. The there's in? a pathway here that goes all the way through, down, and then here's the beautiful big bridge <laughs> over the pine forest. Um, or you can go through and, and walk mm. down there. There's a, a great, um, if you're a, um, a mountain bike, a bushwalker or a mountain bike um, ride, there's some great tracks through there. So over here through, and then you pop out here at the bottom of the, the main campus. But it looks heaps further away on that map, doesn't it? So about, yeah. what, 15 minutes at a good pace? Right here. So here, just go, oops, yeah, come out, and then just, yeah, there should be a path. <laughs> Where's the zoom in? Do they still have link buses? So you they do, do. a loop bus. bus. Yeah. So you can catch a loop bus. They run really regularly during semester times. Um, and it links up here. Yeah, there's an app for that. Around Man, yeah, Man Campus, uh, Med Centre and Tonsley. So if you haven't been to Tonsley, unfortunately we don't have any classes there, I don't think. But um, it's such an awesome site. Great building. Um, uh, just even to check out in terms of its accessibility design. Um, uh, but that's where our engineering um, students and uh, um, uh, medical device uh, company um, um, is there. I think Autism and SA have also moved uh, down there at Ponsley as well. So do check out Ponsley, it's pretty cool. But yes, that's a loop bus that will connect it all together. It's a pathway. And I was wrong before that QU is ranked as the AQF. AQF? Grad, isn't it? Nine. Yeah. 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 Mm. So that's the pedestrian crossing. Yeah, seven I was is talking bachelor. About. Yeah. Eight would be honours. Nine or eight would be on what? No, no, no. Grad cert, perhaps. Nine masters and then ten for PhD. Great. Well, otherwise it's been absolutely lovely. Can I get you, you all? Stick your sticky notes on here if you don't mind, or you can pass them back to us. But 
some of the things that you got out of today, what you found good, and any suggestions you have.